You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks. How's it? I'm Jimmy Wong. Wow, you threw him for a loop. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> I'm James Lee Kwai, Josh's long-lost brother. Did you know that there is a magic artist named James Wong? You what? No. Yeah, yes, there is. I was like, do I, there's, he's done like four cards. Oh, oh, the artist. <laughs> I thought there was a card like oh no 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 staying, no, no, no but no, just no. named Name James, James Wong. Wong yeah and you're like ah uh... we got Phil's and Rebecca's up in magic now so who no, knows no as an artist uh, th- this time around though we are not in that world we are in the wild west the wild plains yeehaw Outlaws of Thunder Junction is about here that means new legendary creatures that means the most powerful cool commanders that we've decided on are going to be talked about today the best of the best hooray. Yeah, we've got some very cool decks that we're going to talk about today. We're going to tell you how to build them. And when you build them, of course, you're going to go need to get some cards. That's it, right. I'll do it. It's do mine. You do it. I want to do it. All right. Cardkingdom.com slash command. <laughs> because I like doing it. <laughs> This is my favorite sponsor, Reed, because they're my favorite retailer when it comes to Magic Cards, single sealed product, and more. We don't talk about this enough. They have a buy list. If you are looking to trade in old cards for new ones or just get money for them, CardKingdom.com will take them off of your hands and give you a great uh, deal on in-store product. Or you can just get just regular just value for your cards. So CardKingdom.com slash command not only has that, but also single sealed products that get you the cards that you need in one convenient package. I want to play this hobby for a long time, so sustainability is a part of it. And Trading in cards uh, when I get new cards is a great way to keep up my hobby while also keep my collection as big slash small slash medium sized as I want it. And Card Kingdom gives me all those options at cardkingdom.com slash command. And once those cards are in your hand, you're going to need to protect them, keep them safe, keep them organized. Go over to ultrapro.com slash command for some of the highest quality magic accessories in the business. We use Ultra Pro products here at the office, and trust me, we've got a lot of cards <laughs> to store, <laughs> sort, and keep safe. Luckily, Ultra Pro has the license to all of the officially licensed magic art, which means that all of our stuff here at the office is looking great. Yeah, really. Uh, we're showing off some of the brand new Ultra Pro product from Thunder. Junction. Yeah. They're we, we super sweet. Uh, they have a real vibe. If you're building a cowboy deck, you kind of need the cowboy playmat and the cowboy sleeves and the cowboy deck box to go along with it. Yeah. It's a real vibe to this set. And uh, Ultra Pro can really help you bling out your playmat and all of your accessories so that they match. Plus, they've got great deals. They've got flash sales that happen all of the time. If you're like me, where you are just like, you know what, I've got four decks that I'm working on right now. I need four boxes and I need four sets of sleeves and I probably a new binder. Why not? Uh, Keep an eye on the Ultra Pro website and uh, you can get all of those all at one time with one great deal while supporting the show over at ultrapro.com slash command. We're also doing something extra spicy, extra turns. We are auditioning for a slot to appear on extra turns. Mm-hmm. Those are going to be due in April, on April 12th. Uh, the details on how to do that, just look in the more info box below. It will require you to record a video and do some other stuff, but make sure you follow those instructions. We have a lot of entries every year when we do the game night stuff as well that don't follow the instructions and they don't qualify. So it's really easy just follow instructions like you follow the rules of magic, mm-hmm. and you can be on an episode of Extra Turns real soon. You do have to be a patron to apply, so uh, if you're a patron already, great. Thanks for supporting the show. You right. can audition right now. If you want to audition but you're not a patron yet, go to patreon.com slash command zone and sign up today. You can audition right away, but make sure you get it in before that deadline, April 12th. And let's shout out one lucky patron. They get all these cool perks, including auditioning for Extra Turns. But they also get shouted out every episode. So this episode is dedicated, dedicated to, to RJ Conley. RJ, you rock. I think I just packed up a, a Kickstarter for RJ. The yeah? name seems really familiar, yeah. So thank you, RJ, for supporting. Thanks, RJ. Okie dokie. So, Rachel, how do we do uh, commander reviews now in case people have missed out? So they release a lot of commanders. A lot. All the time. There's more yeah. commanders. So these days that we have been whittling them down to the select few that we think are going to be the most popular, the most powerful, the ones that you're most likely to build or most likely to play against. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we put together a list of 12 commanders from Thunder Junction that we're going to talk about and some of the supporting sets. Some of these are going to be from the commander precons. Some of these are for the supporting set. Yeah. There's like a, a set that comes in the list slot that was going to be an aftermath thing, but now is in the... there. It's in the play 
booster. I'm it's just not in the main set. Yeah. Uh, it'll, so it'll have a slightly different uh, icon down in the corner. They're yeah. doing some wacky stuff here. Yeah. Like uh, acorns. <laughs> but not we've got great. some amazing legendary creatures that we're excited to talk about today, and many of them are wearing cowboy hats. What more could you ask for, no, Jimmy? No, no kidding. It's pretty exciting. All right. The first one up is a Rakdos cool dude. It's Akul the Unrepentant. Get it? Cool. Akul. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's black, black, red, red for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature. And I don't think these three words have ever been nope. put together. Scorpion, dragon, rogue. Nice. Nice. This is like when you get toys as a kid and you just slap together all the different parts from different yeah. bodies. <laughs> and you're, you're like, I play with this and I'm against yeah. my car and it doesn't matter. There's no linear. <laughs> anyway, it's a 5-5 five, five flying trample and it has an activated ability of sacrifice three other creatures. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. So, pretty cool. Sounds busted, but limited. They put a lot of brakes on this thing, um, which is kind of a shame because it, it's a kind of commander that wants to feel really broken. Yeah, That close. wants to feel like, I'm cheating and I did it! You know, like Rakdos feels really broken when you pull it off, but yeah. there are a lot of limitations. Uh, Akul means that you have to have three creatures. They can't be Akul himself. Yep. You have to do it at sorcery speed, and you have to do it on your turn. So you have to put this thing into play, you have to untap with it, and then it'll be a threat. Yeah. Well, you can put it, you can put it into play, sack three creatures immediately when it's in play, but it's it's not you can't do it like six times. No, you, you can do it one time on your turn. Yeah, you can't play a creature that makes you more creatures and do it again. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So it's a little bit limited, but I do think that this is a pretty cool version of this effect. Like we've seen mm-hmm. when this attacks you cheat stuff into play. We've yeah. seen you cost reductions, but this is like an aristocrat's version of that, so it yeah. looks a little bit different. Uh the first step, of course, is gonna be make some fodder for a cool. You're gonna need those three sort of throwaway creatures, and I think you're probably gonna want them before a cool comes down. Yeah, if you're having a cool on four turn four or turn three, the turns beforehand, you want to get the creatures that you can toss into a cool's ability because then you're dropping a rune scar demon or something massive. So let's talk about ways to make bodies. A cool doesn't care if it's a non-token or a token creature, just needs to be a creature. So three bodies on turn three. How do we do it? The first thing I think of is Hordling Outburst. It's three mana, it's one red red, makes three goblins. Perfect. Yep. That's exactly what we want to do. You could play a rock, maybe a sack outlet on turn two, maybe a blood artist on turn two. Ooh. Then you play the Hordling Outburst, then a cool, and then you cheat something big into play. That's a great curve. Yeah, it's a great curve. Um, Seasoned Pyromancer also follows that curve as long as you're discarding two spells, yeah, but you're going to get two new ones. Uh, two not, yeah. If you yeah. discard two non-land cards, then you make two bodies, and then you can sack the Seasoned Pyromancer as well. So... Uh, that gives you the three bodies on three as well. Notably, uh, a cool is very hard to cast at black, black, red, red, just mm-hmm. like old Rakdos. So Hordling Outburst and Season Pyromancer both being one red, red should let you know that you're not going to be playing too many colorless mana sources in this no, deck. No, I'm not sure how helpful like a soul ring is. Yeah, really. no kidding. Um, there's also a fun card from Unfinity, Circuits Act. Two in a red sorcery, you roll three six-sided die, and for each different result, you make a 1-1 one, one white clown robot artifact creature token. So there's a chance you could get three. It's a little bit of a gamble. It's dicey. Um, it, it's, it's exactly, it's dicey, Jimmy. Oh! Oh, man. We did it. Oh, we boy. We did it. Boy, oh, oh goodness boy. goodness gracious, almighty old me. <laughs> But this effect might be just good enough that you run it anyway. Because yeah. if you hit all three, then that's such an amazing start. Yeah. Um, but that sort of is the end of the list of three mana, three bodies in Rakdos. So we started looking at stuff that makes uh, three bodies for four mana and for and even up. even more than that. Um, like Beetleback Chief type of stuff. Goblins are really good at making disposable creatures. Beetleback Chief is four mana, for comes three. in and makes two goblins. Sling gang lieutenant comes in and makes two goblins as well and also has a very effective aristocrat-esque ability mm-hmm. i can actually see this uh a cool deck being like a goblin aristocrats deck because right. there There's are more, a lot like, of cards. Big goblins on the top end it's yeah. kind of fun and then obviously all the goblins that make more goblins are mm-hmm. a lot of fun um if you want to make four bodies for four mana yeah have one to spare Singir autocrat is four mana comes in with three zero one black surf creature tokens hooray uh, and then Chittering Witch, as long as you have three opponents, you get to have three 1-1s one, with the witch that comes in. Um, and then yeah. you want to make four bodies for five mana, you have the old Siege Gang Commander. Which, yep. again, if you're doing the Goblin version of the deck, maybe cool, cool. And then Tevish Zot, I just realized, could also do it as a Planeswalker, kind of. Makes two yeah. bodies. 
Tevish, that works. I mean, you could even do the the five mana one that it's like when you cast creatures, you make thrills. Oh, yeah. I always forget his name. His name is Endrick Sar, Master Endric Breeder. Endrick Sar, Master Breeder indeed. Uh, would be really good in this deck because uh, you can cast your Akul, make four, and then mm. sack them as soon as they come down. Uh, but that's not the fun part of this deck, the fodder. The fun yeah. part is the top end. What are we cheating into play with our four mana commander? Big, scary children. Yeah, and this is a tricky spot because a lot of the time I think you're you're like, I want Eldrazi's, but yeah. without the cast trigger, because you're just putting them directly into play, this doesn't feel quite as good with Eldrazi's. Yep. And because they can't attack right away, they don't have haste, you don't get those attack abilities either. Yep. So you're I, in red, so you have ways of doing of that. giving them haste. But I think once you're like, okay, I need to put out this to do this, it's like it's you're getting lot. past what the deck wants to do. So I focused on big things that had ETB abilities. Okay, I love uh, that. Because then you get them into play, you get some value off of it right away, no matter if they you know, answer that threat right away. Yeah, there's a good not. chance that after you play a cool, everyone's going to go, cool, I have one removal spell, I get to use it right mm -hmm. now. So you want value out of the thing that comes on the battlefield. For sure. Uh, Archon of Cruelty is the biggest, baddest, has a great ETB, has a great attack trigger if you do get that haste enabler going. Yep. Uh, Abhorrent Overlord's great because it gives you a bunch of 1-1 one, one black harpy creature tokens. So mm -hmm. should a cool stay alive till the next turn, you got to go all over again. Um, one I like because it has haste is Bladewing Deathless Tyrant. Oh, that's right. This is a dragon skeleton flying in haste. When it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker for each creature card in your graveyard, you make a knight. And the, it's a 2-2 knight with menace. So this yeah. one is going to require, uh, it's probably going to be the second activation. Yep. You'll have sacked some stuff already, filled up your graveyard. But... It gives you a hit right away, and it gives you those bodies when it does. Yeah, and you're probably playing looting effects already. You probably have the anger package going on, mm -hmm. so you can get some yeah, stuff Yeah, I would that. think so. Uh, and then Thieving Amalgam is really great because if they decide to take care of Akul, you're going to get a bunch of manifested creatures yeah. thanks to this ape snake. I love this card. Yeah, and then like I mentioned earlier, Runescar Demon. You could just look at a lot of like Kalia lists as well as a lot mm -hmm. of uh, Rakdos, the Lord of Riots, I think yeah. is the original one, to just get inspiration for this deck too. And we'll be doing that a lot this episode, by the way. We'll be saying, hey, this commander, just look at this list and you'll find a lot of cards that go very well in the deck. Yeah, it's... um. I think this one is a little bit more aristocracy than that. You're going to have more like more tokens. You're going to be going yeah. wider because it synergizes with what your commander is actually doing. So there are some different parts about it. And we're going to talk about that in this next section. Um, you're, aristocrats. Aristocrats. I think, yeah. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> We've I, talked about yeah, it. These are the usual suspects, right? I, I do yeah. think this deck is going to have a Blood Artist and a Zulaport Cutthroat. Um, yeah. I do think you, you really want to focus on dies triggers so that you're getting value when you're making tokens and you know when you're sacrificing them yeah this um, is one that you put in that's great van ripper well th uh, the next oh. one is what i was going to say <laughs> van ripper too van ripper yeah is the double is aristocrats is also a very good big body to put in with the ability For sure. yeah this next one is sweet mm. it's body count and where is it from rachel <laughs> nuka bene commander yeah, baby i didn't know this existed until i found it two in the black for an instant has spectacle so you can pay a black for it uh, rather than it's just it's man cost having the opponent lost life this turn but it says draw a card for each creature that died under your control this turn creature not non-token not non-token so that's great. That's just like a nice way to get extra value from your sacrificing stuff to your aristocrats. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you body count for like w one black because your commander, by the way, is a 5-5 five, five flying trample. Absolutely. If that doesn't hurt someone, then your table is surprisingly resilient. <laughs> um, it has a lot of flying blockers with a lot of toughness. <laughs> <laughs> I do think you have to be careful with that cool because you do want to make that activation happen. Yeah. I, this is not the kind of commander that I would be like, I'll go to combat. I'll yeah, hit, yeah, I'll yeah, hit yeah. you <laughs> with this. And then second man. I'll sack some things. Like, basically, as soon as you get priority and can activate a cool, yeah. you should. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And, <laughs> and then you get some chip damage if uh, if you make it that far. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then, like, in terms of, like, resilience is one thing that I was thinking mm. about this deck because you need to basically make sure that when a cool dies, you're still going to be okay when it comes back or mm. to be able to keep going. So I was thinking cards like Gnawing Crescendo was really interesting, and it's whenever a creature non-token creature you control dies this turn, you make a 1-1 black rat creature token with this creature can't block. So it's like really good board wipe. I feel like the best answer for a cool is a board wipe. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're wasting two or three uh, single target removal spells. Mm -hmm. So cards like Gnawing Crescendo make sure that all of your cards gave you more rats so when you cast it again. 
Um, Rise of the Dreadmarn is two in the black. Create X-2-2 two, two black zombie berserkers, where X is the number of non-token creatures that died this turn. A similar thing. You can also foretell it for just a black. Yeah. And then I really like this. Lich Knight's Conquest. Four in the black sorcery. Sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens. And we are making a lot of tokens in this deck. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, this seems sweet. Yeah. I mean, this deck is like, you loot a bunch... You make a bunch of little guys, you kill them all to make bigger guys, you, they eventually die, and then you bring them back with big effects, and then mm-hmm. you try and win. Yeah, classic Rakdos, big stuff. The coolest thing big about stuff. building this deck, I think, is deciding what you want your top end to be. It's it's like you just yeah. look at all the creatures that What's are worth more stuff? than six mana, and you're like, I, I like this one. I like I like Thieving Amalgam, you know? Yeah. That may not be the one that you cheat into. How many do you end up putting in the deck, though, like eight to ten? In Rakdos Lord of Riots, I run like 15, I think, okay. because you have to have one. And a lot of ways to just cycle those cards into your deck and draw more. Yeah, I think this one, I think Rakdos has like 15 really good ones, and then I yeah. have like 22 that are kind of like, you know, it, they'll work. Yeah. Um, but Rakdos can do a whole bunch in one turn. So right. honestly, having a lot is fine. In this one, I don't think you need quite as many because yeah. it's only once per turn. And you're probably filling that spot with some Aristocrats type stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 This next commander, I yelped when I saw it. I was going to say, this is like the Rachel commander. I'm so excited about this. But this it's He's back and he's thriving. It's Bruce <laughs> Tarl, roving rancher. Two red white for a legendary human warrior. He's a 4-3. And this first line of text is incredible. It says, oxen you control have double strike. Oh, wow. Yes. Oxen. Whenever Bruce enters the battlefield or attacks, exile the top card of your library. If it's a land, you make a 2-2 white ox creature token. Otherwise, you may cast it until until the end of your next turn. So you can't play lands that you exile off Mm-mm. Bruce Tarl, but they turn into 2-2 Oxen, and then they become 2-2 Double Strikers. This is sweet, because it's just going to give you an extra card every turn, and yeah. if it's a land, eh, it's a 2-2 with Double Strike, which you can absolutely take advantage of, especially with anthems and equipment and all sorts yeah. of things. And this is just straight up a 4-mana exile per basically per, per turn, hopefully, if you can keep attacking with him. But, yeah. you know, that's the regular rate to get something exiled off the top of your library on a consistent basis in red, usually. Yeah, this is sort of Bell Borka, but Oxes. Yeah. This, <laughs> is, this is Ox Borka. Bells go on Oxes, no That's true. Ox Borka. Yeah, so you can find your Oxes. Yep. The first thing I did when I saw this card was like, all right, show me the Oxes. What you are the best straight ones? straight to Scryfall. And, of course, it's Ox of Agonis, I think, is going to be your best Ox. For sure. He's a 4-2 for 5 mana when he enters the battlefield. You discard your hand and then draw 3 cards. He also has Escape, where you can pay red, red, and exile 8 cards from your graveyard. Going to be kind of tricky, uh, but he comes in with a plus 1 counter if you do that. 4-2 is a great body to give double strike to. <laughs> yeah, 5-3 too, and you escape it later on in the game. Absolutely. And you're fueling the escape cost when you cast it. Mm. So it's pretty good. Um, Charging Cinderhorn. Never I seen this, this card before. I know. I was excited about four it. Four mana, 4-2 with haste. We've noticed a lot of Ox has, have four power. Yep. At the beginning of each player's end step, if no creatures attack this turn, put a Fury Counter on Charging Cinderhorn. Then it does damage equal to the number of Fury Counters to that player. <laughs> So, I love this. He gets yeah. mad when people don't Urgh. attack. It's old goad. Yeah, old goad, yeah. <laughs> this old goat can still goad. Uh, this is a new ox from Wilds of Eldraine, Commander. This is Liberated Livestock. It's a six mana cat bird ox. <laughs> yes. All three are on the art, notably. He is a four six. When he dies, create a one one cat, a one one bird, and a two four ox creature token. Mm. For each of those tokens, you may put an aura from your hand under the grave. That's not ma- that doesn't matter. When he <laughs> dies, you make a bunch of tokens, and in the meantime, it's a six mana four six with double strike. Yeah, cat, bird, ox. Because it is an ox, but it's also the other things. Uh, there are some new oxes in this set. Of course, it's a cowboy set. There's got to mm-hmm. we got to have something to ranch. I can't believe this is not like a you rare. Ha- <laughs> the, <laughs> this, this is one? a common. Yeah, it's incredible, and yeah, the name is even better. Yeah, this is holy cow. <laughs> This, by the way, would have been a rare like five years ago. <laughs> two and a white for a flash flying 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and scry one. Like, what? This yeah. is a common? Yep. It's it's bonkers. And it's also, it's so powerful. Like, if, if you do a three mana 2-2 two, two flash flying double strike, this thing can just homf an attacker. Yeah, and then, it'll kill a lot of commanders or for trade fork. for a lot of commanders. Yeah, I, I think this card's sweet in the deck. Plus, you get to say, holy cow! Holy cow! Woo-hoo! Somebody attacks you and you go, holy cow! Yeah, that was a bad attack. get them out of nowhere. 
Um, and then, of course, there are Changeling, the most notable Changeling because they're all ox, but this one just looks like an ox. It's Torian Mauler. Gotta have it. Hooray. Um, and then you're probably probably doing some Mask Week Nexus stuff so that your commander also has mm. double ox trait power. <laughs> one of my favorite ways to turn everything into ox is the Shields of Velis Vel. Oh, yeah, these are This fun. is the, a one mana instant that has changeling, and it says creatures target player controls get plus zero, plus one, and gain all creature types until end of turn. So it's like, cool, you didn't block. Now my whole board is oxes, and you're taking twice as much damage as you Ooh. thought you were taking. All right. Pretty fun. Okay, well, let's talk about some thematic cards. Mm-hmm, gotta. If you're building this deck, you're putting in contraband livestock. Yeah. You exile a creature, then you roll a d20, one through nine. The controller makes a 4-4 green ox creature token. So you could do this to your own stuff, notably. Mm-hmm. 10 through 19, the controller makes a green boar. Oh, no, and then 20, it makes a 0-1 white goat. Yeah. So you're actually just hoping for like a 48, 49% chance to get an ox. Have we called this Swords to Cowshares yet? Whoa! Have we done yeah, that? Yeah, that is Swords to Cowshares. Swords to Cowshares in hilarious. this deck, for sure. Uh, Transmogrifying Wand is hilarious. It destroys creatures and turns them into 2-4 oxes. You can use it three times. It's actually a really good card, It's I pretty think. sweet in this deck. Just, it's like a repeatable removal spell for other stuff or mm-hmm. your own stuff. Yeah, it's only sorcery speed, which limits it a little bit, but it's three removal spells in one, and it's Turn stuff into ox. Uh, there is one more incredible ox card that we have to put in this deck from new the one. new set. It's bovine intervention. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two mana instant that destroys target artifact or creature. Its controller makes a 2 2 ox. So everybody's playing oxen today. Yay. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that you are allowed to cast the spells off Bruce Tarl if they're not a land from exile. So that's card advantage. If Bruce can attack every single turn, that means you can do it multiple times. And Red loves to do this. There's a lot of this sort of stuff now in Red. Mm. Um, Payoffs for casting from exile. Passionate Archaeologist is the background that allows you to just do a bunch of damage from the, the spells you cast. Um, Comedy of Celebration puts one on counters on creatures you control, which is really good when you get a bunch of ox and they are all double strikers. And then Delayed Blast Fireball just is a house. Card's incredible. Yeah. One-sided board wipe that deals five damage to your opponents and their creatures when you cast it from exile. Yeah, pretty strong. So it's oxes, it's cast from exile, but you also have to make sure that you are triggering Bruce as much Bruce. as possible. So you either have to make it safe for him to attack or you can blink Bruce. Both oh, of yeah. these are completely viable options. Um, Bruce likes to attack. He's an ex-soldier. I think giving him the tools is pretty fun. Yeah. I would put Sword of Forge and Frontier in the deck. It's a little mm. on flavor. Gives him pro, red, and green. And it's really, really good with the double strike ox. Because when it hits, you impulse draw two, great, mm. and you get an additional land drop. So if you hit twice with this, you impulse draw four, and you can play two extra lands this turn. Yeah, double strike and swords is so nice. Really, really powerful. Great to put on Bruce. Great to put on an ox. Give that ox a sword. If Bruce just wants to spy on people, you can play Reconnaissance, which allows you to <laughs> remove him from combat after he attacks, uh, thus not allowing anyone to block him. <laughs> and then Dolman Gate is the classic red-white. There's also uh, Eros, 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 yeah. god of... Some kind of god that prevents god attacking. God of menace. God of menace. <laughs> <laughs> it prevents damage to attacking creatures you control. So that means your ox can swing freely. It's really bad for people to block them. Um, <laughs> they and just trade it down. Just, yeah, you just this. you just hurt people. <laughs> uh, and then of course, if you blink Bruce, blink Tarl, uh, ephemerate, teleportation circle, hooray. Works great. Notably, Bruce says you can cast those cards until the end of your next turn. So if you end step blink with teleportation circle, you're good to go, right? Yeah, you still have one more turn to cast them. Yeah, until the end, until of, the end next. of your next turn. Which yeah. is great, by the way, because so many of these exile cards, you'll play it, you'll exile something, and it's like, well, I can't do it this turn. Yeah. Bruce, you play it on curve at four, and then whenever that next card is, you get to play your next turn. Yeah. Unless it's a land, in which case you get to swing at someone with an ox your next turn. Yeah, I mean, that's Hooray. great. If on turn four you play this, you exile a land... You now and you have ox. a four mana four three and a two two with double strike. That's a huge port. Next turn you play sword of sword of sword of sword of sword of sword of forge forge forge, forge and frontier. Whoa, Jimmy's skipping. At five mana, <laughs> five five, but, but <laughs> mana, and then you can equip it to your horse. Horse ox. <laughs> I'm on it. All right, this next commander is sick. It is wild. They they made she's back and she's better than ever. Yeah. In fact, I don't even know why the prior version of this card exists because this one is just so good. Mm-hmm. Actually, the last version of this card exists because Magali's art is amazing. It is really beautiful. All right, this is Ariat the Beguiler. This time Chris Rallis took a swing at the art. It's one in Esper, white, blue, and black for a 4-4 human warlock. It says Jimmy Wong will probably build this deck. <laughs> 
It's got lifelink and it says whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a non-land permanent an opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to that aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent for as long as that aura is attached to it. Okay, you are casting auras and if I cast a four mana aura on a four mana commander, I gain control of it as long as the aura is on that commander. And it's not just creatures, it says permanent. Yeah, non-land permanent. Non-land permanent. Yeah, so very exciting stuff here. Mm. And notably, if you kill Ariette, it doesn't give the stuff back. Nope. They have to remove the aura from the creature in order to get it back. Or just the creature. Oh, remember, yeah. Blow up their own commander so they um, can put it back in the command zone. This card is so freaking cool because I love stealing stuff. This so this is one of those commanders that I looked at. There's a cu- there's a couple that we're going to talk about today actually where it's like technically so interesting and the build is incredible and yeah. you're like I can do all of these really cool things and it unlocks all of these cool cards that you never you get would to never play, play with. which is a commander yeah and then at the end of the day you're like oh this is just a steal your stuff deck yeah <laughs> this is just a cute theft deck yeah and you say it that is like it's boring Rachel <laughs> I think of it as the coolest thing in the game just make sure it's okay with your play group that you're have a deck or just play it once per night maybe it um, better be okay because it's sick. Jimmy's coming <laughs> I'm coming I'm coming for I'm your commander. Um, yeah, <laughs> I am going for your commander. Right? So, so this verse section is about auras that only enchant creatures. Obviously, this is where there's way better auras. There, yeah. There's way more design space dedicated to enchant creatures. So there's a version of this deck that is dedicated almost solely to stealing creatures. And then you could also pivot into sort of a Bruna strategy where you just load all of the auras up on one thing and yeah. knock somebody out with commander damage. But it doesn't have to be your commander if you don't want to. Uh, you could yeah, steal a commander and load it up. And hit someone. All right. Pretty Notably, sweet. they don't get haste if you steal it that same turn. That's true. Okay, so let's talk about auras and how much mana value we want them to be. So I think four mm-hmm. mana or higher seems to be pretty darn good. That's kind of where I was thinking. I think the vast majority of creatures are going to be, at, like, impactful creatures are going to start at four. Yeah. You don't, like, a lot of the three mana and less are fine to steal. Like, I would th- say three and four is a good, op- like, mm-hmm. s- set of options. Um, I don't think you really want to do two and less if it only targets creatures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in that case, in, like, a more a group that plays a lot of lower mana value stuff maybe yeah. but then it's like oh cool I steal your land war elves yeah which is like fine yeah I mean it gets better if you steal creatures that can tap for a lot of mana mm-hmm. or have like really cool activated abilities but for the most part I think having a higher and this is also what makes this deck a little clunky mm-hmm. is that you play Ariette and it's like cool you better have mana to play the next thing that steals something impactful otherwise everyone's gonna be looking at that and going you're not stealing my stuff are you yeah she's gonna get removed right away yeah. it, it really feels like you have to be able to cast Ariette and then another like totally. two or three drop. So you do need a lot of mana and you need it fast. Yep. Um, I don't think this is necessarily a deck that you just slam Ariette on turn three. And, no, and no, 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 no. <laughs> you have other stuff to do. But luckily there are some really, really cool creature auras uh, at four mana that have a lot of extra value as well. Yeah, so let's talk about ones that gain you value because, mm-hmm. again, a lot of times as you're casting enchantment aura, the biggest, worst thing that can happen is someone blows you up by removing the creature you're going for and then nothing happens. You've just lost a card. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love this first one that you found. It's really cool. It is cool. It's so cool. It's also from Wilds of Eldraine Commander. It's Songbird's Blessing. Three and a white for a creature aura. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an aura. What? You may put that card onto the battlefield. What? what? If you don't, put it into your hand. What? <laughs> put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this thing cannot whiff as long as you have auras in your graveyard. If you don't want to use it right away when you find it. Put it in your hand. Uh, as long as you have auras in your library. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, and yeah, you can just put it in your hand. Yeah. It just draws you a card every time you attack. Plus you steal something. Seems really good. This is also the thing that you could put on your own creature and no one really blinks at until mm-hmm. you start. Sw- that, this way, right? You put this on the creature, then you cast area. You attack with the creature, mm-hmm. get an aura and attach it to something. That's sweet. I love that side, yeah. that uh, curve. And then if you draw it later on in the game, just steal someone's creature with it and hope you get to attack. Great. That Maybe works. that creature has haste too. Who knows? Um, next up we have Sage's Reverie, three in the white. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each aura you control that's 
attached to a creature. Really good. Really good. And then enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. So this steals something, makes it really big, but more importantly, you could draw two, three cards off it, which seems pretty important in the stack. I love this include. Uh, Estrid's Invocation was one that you put down. Yeah, it's and a fun one. you don't think about it as like an aura card. But, but it can be. It can be. Because it is an enchantment, but it can become a copy of an enchantment you control. Enters the battlefield as a copy of any enchantment you control except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. You may exile this enchantment if you do return to the battlefield under its owner's control. So, so decide if you, uh, like, I have no longer wish I had stolen this one. I'm going to take that one instead. You can yeah. have this back. Yeah, which is kind of fun. Or <laughs> you can have it back and I'm going to immediately steal it again Aha. with a different aura. <laughs> um, it is fun to just have flexibility in a deck like this, too, because mm-hmm. auras, they just feel so like once it's down, that's it. There's no flexibility. That's It's not like a creature where you can en- put an equipment on or do something else to it. It's just like the aura is there. The, t- the creature is stolen. And at least this can curry you some favor if everyone is hating on you. It's like, I'll give you your commander back, yeah. but... But... Um, I liked Angelic Destiny. This is a four-mana aura that when it enchants a creature, that creature gets plus four plus four, <laughs> gains first strike, flying, and an angel is an angel in addition to its other types. When this creature dies, return Angelic Destiny to its owner's hand. Nice. This is four mana for a huge amount of power, and it's the aura can just keep looping back to your hand. So it's yeah. almost like you draw a card when that creature dies. Yeah, very valuable, um, especially because you just get to replay it over and over again. Unless someone yeah. exiles, in which case you're in bad news. Yeah, well. Uh, Timely Ward, two and a white. You may cast a spell as though it had flash if it targets a commander. A which it, which it might. commander. And it just gives a creature indestructible. So very timely. You can flash it out and steal someone's stuff. Or and save really Ariette in response to a removal spell. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. Timely Ward's super flexible in this deck, and I think it's funny that you can use it to steal a little ca- commander, yeah. but also keep your highly targeted commander. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Similarly, I put Gift of Doom on this list. It's I don't think it goes in every version, but I do think this is neat. This is sweet. An, what do you mean? This goes in every version. This is an aura with morph. So you pay three and you put it face down and its morph cost is sacrifice another creature. So probably <gasps> another creature you've stolen. Oh my. It's no mana and it has split second because that's how morph works. Yeah. And it's five mana. So it's a, it says enchanted creature has death touch and indestructible. So at instant speed, you can sacrifice a creature that you've stolen Cat, like, put this five mana or a steal something that's attacking you, steal yeah. something that's impactful right now, and it cannot be countered or really responded to in any way. <laughs> and then you have a death touch indestructible creature you've just stolen. Yeah. What if you had angelic destiny on the creature you sacked? Like, uh, it could yeah, be really you get this sweet. Thing. There's huge blowouts that can happen with Gift of Doom. And yeah. I've been looking for a deck for it, and it seems really cool here. Um, of course, you want to protect your stuff. So you either have auras that are protecting themselves, like Diplomatic Immunity. Uh, can't, it basically has Shroud, and the creature has Shroud. Mm. But you can steal something small with it. And I, you probably play Greater Oromancy in this deck. Other mm. enchantments you control have Shroud, and enchanted creatures you control have Shroud. As long as you're not playing a bunch of equipment and you don't want to load up one specific creature over and over again, this is just a great way to steal stuff. And then everyone goes like, well, I can't do anything about that now. Mm. I did want to mention real quick before we move on to the next section, there are a lot of auras that say enchant something that you control or Uh, enchant something an opponent controls. Uh, Those are bad in this deck because as soon as that target becomes illegal, mm. they'll fall off. So if you cast something that says enchant something an opponent controls and you gain control of it, now an opponent no longer controls it and it so it's not a legal oh, or a thing. So bye I, bye. So it falls off. Um, so be careful uh, what the specific wording is on the ores that you're picking. That being said, I do think that you want to pay special attention to stuff that says enchant permanent. Do it. Because this means you can steal rocks, you can steal enchantments, you can steal these soul rings is sort of what I am looking at here. Yeah, stealing soul rings for two mana still is a pretty good deal. Even if it comes in tapped because they'll tap it in response or whatever, or they've used it. Mm -hmm. But just taking it's amazing. So you're you're going on Scryfall and you're looking up the words enchant permanent. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some really good ones here. Rune of Sustenance is a one in the white aura rune. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. You just nice. love that in this deck. Uh, as long as Enchanted Permanent is a creature, it has lifelink. As long as Enchanted Permanent is an equipment, it has equipped creature, has lifelink. So yeah. you could steal a creature with it, or you could just steal Soaring or another. Again, it's greater to or equal to or less than. So you could steal a two mana rock as well through Rune of Sustenance. Yeah. Talk Seem- about messing up someone's day. Curator's Ward is sweet, too. This is a three-mana Enchant Permanent. It says Enchanted Permanent has Hexproof. Nice. When Enchanted Permanent leaves the battlefield, if it was historic, draw 
two cards. Oh yeah, this card was unplayable and limited, but very playable in Commander. In really, this deck. really good here. You can steal a thing, and if they blow it up to deprive you of it, you draw two cards. Yeah, if it, it, if it was like an too. artifact or their commander or something. Yeah, this one's done by James Wong. Oh my gosh, it is. So I drew the art on this. <laughs> My former self, yeah. formal self, because that's, yeah, my real name. Mm -hmm. uh, Reality Acid. It's a great card. You added it in two in the blue, enchant permanent. It has vanishing three, so it comes in with three time counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, you remove a time counter. When it has none, you sacrifice it. And mm -hmm. when it leaves the battlefield, enchant a permanent controller sacrifices it. So you steal something, and you know it's going to go away eventually. So which yeah. is kind of cool, too. Vanishing three is a long time. Yeah. Indestructibility is also a cool option. This is a four mana aura that says enchant permanent and just gives it indestructible. Yeah. Great. It's mine and it's indestructible. Forever. Um, something that worth noting is we picked a lot of things that were three and four mana for this. Yeah. Because I think control magics typically live in the five and six mana range. Mm -hmm. So you don't really get the benefit from your commander if you're playing the five drop just ones, playing, just yeah. regular. Like then you, you just, just play control sort magic. Sort of play a deck full of control magics and you have the same effect. Um, oh. So if you want to take full advantage of your commander, you probably just want to live in that sort of reasonable yeah. side, but maybe you run Control Magic too. Yep. And there, I, I looked, at, there's so many auras that are like one mana, two mana. If your table is full of one and two drops, then yeah. you could probably throw more of those in this deck, but I think you're safest at three and more safe at four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, aura support. This deck wants to draw as many cards as possible so it doesn't run out of gas. So you've got your regulars. you got Sram, Senior Artificer, and Core Spirit Dancer, right. which are just going to replace all of the cards you cast with another card from your deck. Um, Sigarda's Aid, you Busted. can cast aura and equipment spells as though they had Flash, Yikes. Hooray, and it has some auto-equip stuff on there, but you just basically want that part of it. That seems so powerful. Yeah, it's really good here. Uh, Arden also helps you move auras around. At the beginning of your combat, you can be like, I don't want this thing anymore. I want no. that. Yeah. And it auto-equips and auto-steals, and you can make someone very happy and another person very sad. Yeah, it's wild. It says you can move, you can attach any number of auras and equipment you control to target permanent or player. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think Arden's pretty sweet in this deck. Yeah. As um, is this next one. As we, yes. we, I really liked the idea of the flexibility here of being like, all right, I've had this one for long enough. I'm going to, you can have that and I'll take this. Yeah, I love so that. So having auras that can move around is seems really powerful. Shielded by Faith is a neat one. Uh, it gives the, it's a three mana aura that gives the enchanted creature indestructible. And it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach Shielded by Faith to that creature. Man, this is kind of like that, uh, that, Swine from Theros that switches spells every time you cast oh, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is it's really not a pig, annoying. Though. It's a chimera. It's a chimera. Perplexing yeah, chimera. Perplexing chimera. I don't know why yeah. I said swine. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still in my You're ox, in mode. ox mode. Yeah, my yeah. ox era. <laughs> but this makes everyone look at their hand and go, I don't want to cast a three drop. I can't cast any three drops. Yeah, because what if James Wong wants it on his battlefield? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just chilling on your commander, making her indestructible, yeah. <laughs> and, and saying you can't guess any creatures. Yeah, I love three. that. You can play it on your Brutal. own stuff. Yeah. And you, yeah. Can, you put it on the SRAM or something that is really valuable. Yeah. Um, I love Stasis Cell, Enchant Creature, and doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, and you pay four mana to attach it to another creature. Just swing that thing around. And it's five <laughs> mana, too, by the way, so you can steal a lot of stuff with Stasis Cell. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, four mana to move around. You yeah. mentioned this one. I, it's got to go in the deck for sure. Yeah, Winds of Wrath. Destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted that can't be regenerated. Nice. That's just a one-sided board wipe in that's this deck. all the stuff. That's yours. Hooray. So, yeah, that's cool. I like that card. It's sweet. Ariette, you keep rocking. You keep beguiling out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next one is my absolute favorite. His name was Felix Five Boots. <laughs> You're going to say your absolute favorite like three times and then name a different card as your favorite card of the episode. <laughs> yeah, I am. But look at him, he's an ooze and he's wearing five boots. Yeah, this is really cute. Uh, and busted, by the way. It well, is. not that busted, but still very busted. Felix is a five mana, two black, green, blue. So five mana altogether, Sultai. A legendary ooze rogue for a five four with menace and ooze. ward two. If a creature you control dealing combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. All right. So we've seen this before. Panharmonicon doubling the triggers, mm -hmm. uh, the just double the trigger type card. 
car type commander exists, but this is specifically about combat damage mm -hmm. triggering, um, which immediately is like, ah, oh, well, that's difficult because it's commander. There's always going to be blockers. Nah. Nah. You'll figure out a way to get damage in. This card is actually very strong, and the ward two makes it harder and harder to remove, as we all know. Mm -hmm. The Voha effect. <laughs> um, it's the only creature that's ever had ward. Sorry. <laughs> this, uh, this first section I wanted to talk about creatures. So I they're on Scryfall, they're called saboteurs. Saboteurs. Their, their, their tag is called saboteurs, so oh, that's what I've been oh, calling oh, oh. them. But they're creatures that when they deal damage, they have some kind of triggered effect naturally on the spell. Yeah. So uh, the first one I wanted to talk about is Thief of Sanity, because this card's yeah, awesome. Yeah, this card deals combat damage to a player. Look at the top three cards of their library, exile one of them face down, then the rest go into the graveyard. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled with any type of mana. So or like your mana bane twice type. when you hit with this. Yeah, and... Look, a three mana two two that you play before three boots, five boots, seven boots. Some amount of boots. It changes all the time. <laughs> all right. He can make as many feet as he'd like. Yeah. And boy, he spent a lot at Foot Locker. Um, <laughs> Thief of Sandy is going to hit someone before five boots comes down, probably. Mm -hmm. So this card is just going to be good by itself. Mm -hmm. Thief of Sandy, too, in Commander can sometimes steal you soul rings, like steal you path to exiles there's so much good stuff at low mana cost that thief of sandy can grab mm -hmm. the only downside is it might fill up that pro that person's graveyard does it go to their graveyard yeah the rest go to the graveyard oh nice yeah um what i like about thief of sanity too is it comes down below f before felix so you yeah. can play thief and then you can play felix after you can connect the turn and you've gotten value out of felix right away you probably already hit someone once already with thief yeah yeah so i love that this next one is the same it's four mana so it comes down the turn before felix it's schema thief for three and a blue, this is a Vidalcan rogue artificer. I've seen this card in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is from <laughs> Martin Machine. Uh, Commander? Uh, Commander, I think. S yeah, MOC. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. When it deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of target artifact that player controls. Ooh-wee! This thing is great. It's a, like four mana, three, three flyer that when it hits, it gives you a signet. Yeah. It, or like a treasure or something. Yeah, um, that's true. Is really, really powerful um, and is going to be great the turn but when you can attack with it with Felix. Yep, and then you've got all the creatures that just have on combat damage triggers that doesn't actually have to be that creature. So Grim Hireling allows you to make uh, two treasure tokens whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player. So Thief of Sandy, Grim Hireling, five boots, four treasures, six cards you're looking at. Two. Oh my God. And you can cast those spells with the four treasures. Yeah, it's nuts. Bananas. <laughs> Toski Bearer of Secrets and any of the creatures that say whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Mm -hmm. So you got Oran Frass Fang as well in the yeah, similar world there. mission works yeah. this way too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I The next category that I wanted to include was talking about modifications that you can put on creatures. Mm -hmm. So this is equipment with combat damage uh, and uh, just other things that you can add onto it. So Mask of Riddles was my example because it gives evasion, it gives the equipped creature fear, and when it connects uh, with a player, you may draw a card. Ah. There you cool. go. Yeah, kind of like Mask of Memory, but in this case, fear. You're just going to draw two and it gives the creature uh, naturally evasion. Yeah. Wand of Orcus, this card is so sweet. Busted. I haven't seen this played that much, but now that I look at it, I'm like, wow, it's actually pretty yeah. sweet. Three is a big equip cost. But yeah. Two it's, and, two it's and a black to play, three to equip. Whenever a uh, equipped creature attacks or blocks, it and zombies you control gain death touch. Not as relevant because you got to make the zombies. And good thing it does. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create that many 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. So on a creature that's got five power connecting for five, like you make five. Oh, yeah, and then you, because it's doubled, you make ten. And Gross. then they all gain death And touch. they're untapped, Next right? Time. Yeah, they're untapped. Yeah, it's a, that's an enormous turn. Like, you yeah. play this on, on three Felix next turn. So, like, two turn two, rock, turn three, this, turn four, Felix. Oh, gosh. Then next turn, you would attack, make ten zombies. Yeah. He's got menace already, and now yep. he's got death touch. Yeah. Brutal curve. Um, I think you should go on Scryfall, everyone, and look up the words, create that many. Because those words don't exist very often on magic cards. And when they mm. do, it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I think is really cool, and they actually included it in the pre-con alongside Felix. I mm -hmm. think there's one card with it is Cypher. Cypher. So Cypher's reminder text for those who haven't played with Cypher says, it's a five mana sorcery. This version is writ of return and it has an effect. And then the effect happens and it says, then you may exile this spell card encoded on a creature you control. <laughs> Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. Cool. So you cast a sorcery, you sort of like staple it to a creature, not literally on the battlefield. You sticker it to a creature. You sticker it. It's much safer. <laughs> 
And then when it connects, you get a free version of this sorcery. If you have Felix, you get two Twice. free versions. Rid of Return is sick. You just return two creature cards now from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Yeah. Which is really sweet. Especially if you're doing a deck that's full of these like creatures that have combat damage yeah. uh, effects. Uh, and of course, if you got a commander with a cool effect, there's a background that probably applies to it. So mm -hmm. in this case, Feywild Visitor allows you to make one ones every time a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, non-token. So you're going to make two of those now. Pretty sweet. So I think that there's like there's that version, which is creatures that are good at connecting yeah, and have connect. abilities or want to connect and have abilities. And then there's a version that goes super, super wide with evasive like tokens, like it, pro it probably include the Feywild Visitor. Yeah. And then plays a lot of like the Toski style effects. So you're just drawing oh, a cool. ton of cards with all of your little flyers. Yep. So I wanted to talk about what kind of cool evasive creatures you could include. Uh, like a Baleful Strix, of course, is the first thing on all of these lists. Uh, but speaking of Cypher, I wanted to talk about this one. It's Call of the Nightwing to a blue <laughs> and a black for a sorcery that makes a 1-1 one, one black horror creature token with flying and puts it onto the battlefield. And then you can immediately Cypher onto that thing or another thing. Like a Baleful Strix. keep making more evasive attackers and it's a combat damage trigger, so you mm. make even, even more if you have uh, Felix on the battlefield. That's, um... Why would you do that? That's so mean. No, it's so not. many little blue, black, flying little things little just horrors. murdering you over and over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do like that quite a lot. Um, Thieving Skydiver is just great in this deck. I like that you include this one because it regularly could just be a two mana two one with flying, but you can also kick it and then steal artifacts or equipment. Yeah, uh, and then it gets attached. By the way, if it's an equipment, yeah, because then you get more combat damage triggered from swords. Sick. Sick. Yeah, I mean, Thieving Skydiver is just going to be great because it has an ability when it comes in and then you can put equipment on it or you can just draw cards off of your Toski or yep. re Reconnaissance Mission or whatever. Yeah, and if those equipment are the kind that give combat damage triggers, blah, 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 you're doing the thing. Nice. Um, I like this edition a lot too. It, mm -hmm. It's Simic, so you're, you have access to all the mana in the world, but why not make a mana a manor dork that also can hit in the mm -hmm. air, like Mana Leaf Pixie, just a blue and a green for a flying 2-2 two -two that can tap for blue or green. Yeah. Brings your commander down early oh, and later. Mara Leaf Pixie. That's, yeah, that's true. Not Mana Leaf. <laughs> Commonly mis mistooken. <laughs> She's much prettier than Much that. prettier. This deck is sweet. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a lot more open-ended than it sounds. If you want to lean more into Cypher, do that. Yeah. Cool. If you want to lean into equipment, then it's going to be more that. Um, it, it's a flavor to taste type Yeah, thing. and Salt Side doesn't really aim towards wanting to always attack all the time. Mm -hmm. You know? There's a couple of cards, like you have your zombie one. Yeah. Um, the Naga. The Sidisi. Sidisi, yeah. yeah. And that wants to attack. Yeah. But in general, I Salt is always like, oh, I'm going to build a giant value engine up and destroy you with like, you know, mm. oozes and blobs or whatever. But this is cool because it lets you play all those creatures that normally you kind of look at and go, eh, in Commander, which is like combat damage matters creatures. Cool. All right. This next one is a familiar face, and he's more powerful than ever. Yeah, they reduced the mana cost by a bunch, oh, and of God. course, the effect is also ridiculous. It's Girid Mirror of the Wilds. Red, green, white. So three mana altogether for a legendary human shaman. He's a 3 3 with haste. And it says non token creatures you control have tap, create a token that's a copy of target token you control that entered the battlefield this turn. Okay. So non-token creatures can only tap to activate this ability. Mm -hmm. Giri can do it the turn he comes down because he has haste, and it's a token, any kind of token, but you have to have made it that you control, and then it's entering the battlefield. You can only do it the turn it comes in. So if you make a token and pass the turn, you can no longer copy that token. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of tokens to copy, turns out. Yeah, I mean, Naya is good at making big, scary tokens, and I think that's the kind of token deck this is. is yeah. You want the biggest, scariest tokens you can make, and then you want to make a whole lot of them. Yeah. Uh, the biggest token I could think of was Galta and Maverin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to make a tapped and attacking XX Green Dino, where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures you control. So it could be a 5-5, five, five, a 7-7, seven, seven, a 3-3 three, three if it's just geared, but, mm -hmm. but pretty scary. And this Galta and Maverin doesn't care... Um, what attacked so you can leave Galta and Maverin back and tap it to make more copies of that that's right uh, dinosaur that you attacked with yeah yeah it's whenever you attack which is great uh, coolest move with this one is definitely with oh, this guy yeah right? gruff triplets yuck 
This is a Wilds of Eldraine card that terrorized limited formats. Pre-releases were, <laughs> d- were ruined thanks to the Gruff Triplets. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it's not a token, you create two tokens that are copies of it. And then whenever Gruff Triplets dies, you put a number of 1-1 counters equal to its power on each creature you control named Gruff Triplets. So you can make the triplets, mm-hmm. and then you can copy the triplets. If you have two other non-token creatures, you can tap them, make two more Gruff Triplets. And now, well, now they're... Now they're... Quintuplets? Quintuplets? Quintu- no, I don't know. Four. They're five its. It's... <laughs> Sink, 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 sink tuplets. There's a Roman major out there screaming mm-hmm. pen, at us right now. Pen tuplets? Pen tuplets. Pentacle. I think, I think we got that. Yes, there we go. There <laughs> it is. All thanks to the pentacle, magic's greatest icon, <laughs> etched into the brain of demonic uh, tutor. I mean, the more tri- triplets you have, the more powerful they are. Yeah, so and you kill it's... one, all of them get stronger. So yeah. get your dice ready. Um, Seems really, really sweet in this deck. Plus, it gives you a non-token creature that if they have haste, you can make another copy right away. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you just need to look in these colors and you can find things that make cool big tokens. Mm-hmm. Jax is the troublemaker. You can blitz this out so it has haste immediately, but you're also using this to create a token of another creature you control and it gains haste, and when it dies, you sack it at the beginning of the end step, activate only as a sorcery. Yeah, this just gives you another really sweet token to copy, yeah. right? Because the token copy that you're going to get uh, will go away at the end of turn, but... The copy you make of that token will won't. Stack. Yeah, but then it still has the ability that will draw you a card, which mm-hmm. is kind of cool. Yeah, because Jaxus applies the layer of the token you make with Jaxus has to get sacrificed, but anything you make that's a copy of that token isn't doesn't have that layer of Jaxus effect. It's just as when this creature dies, draw a card. I believe so. The, it is the way. The next one that makes a really big token is the new one, Thousand Moon Smithy. Oh, yeah. Uh, when this enters the battlefield, it makes a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control. So like a super construct. <laughs> and then uh, if you have, you can tap five untapped artifacts and or creatures you control, which hopefully you're going to have a lot of those. If you do, it flips into a land that makes more super constructs. Yay. Uh, seems really great in this deck and gives you a way, like a repeatable way to make huge tokens that are good to copy. Yep, totally. Um, you also have ways to just make more tokens because you need more tokens. Can't mm-hmm. just stay with one. So populate is obviously going to be a very popular keyword. <laughs> Get it? Okay, Nesting Dovehawk. We saw this go off in the game nights recently. Um, whenever a creature token enters the battlefield, you put a woman counter on Nesting Dovehawk. More importantly, at the beginning of combat on your turn, populate. Nice. So that's mi- that's a token that entered the battlefield during your turn, mm-hmm. uh, and then you're allowed to tap a non-token to make a copy of it if gear it's out. Uh, you could also put the old gear it in. He makes a 4-4 four, four, uh, rhino creature token with trample. That's a great thing to copy. And when he attacks, you populate. Uh, the token enters attacking. So it gives you a repeatable way to make a good token that enters the battlefield. He kind of does it all. Yeah. Because it's Gearid. It's Gearid. <laughs> uh, determine iteration one in a red at the beginning of combat on your turn. Populate, and then the token created this way gains haste. Sack it at the beginning of the next end step. So again, just okay. more ways to make more tokens. Uh, you can populate it. It gains haste, and you're at the beginning of combat. So you can populate, make the token, make a copy of it, make the copy of that token. That also has haste, and then you go to combat to swing. Mm-hmm. Hooray. Uh, and then, of course, you probably want token doublers. This is going to be your, like, Mondrak or your Anointed Procession or yep. O'Hare Talk or whatever you've got sitting in your binder unused. Make a bunch uh, of stuff. All of those work. Parallel lives. We're in green. There's lots of options. Yeah. The next section I wanted to talk about is little creatures that are good for tapping. Because yeah. you do want non-token creatures that come down before Gearid so that when you make the big token, you're ready to make a bunch of copies for, mm-hmm. of it. So Amara, Soul of the Accord, is a classic. When it becomes tapped, you make a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. If you have nothing else going on, that is a token you can copy. But more importantly, you want Amara to tap. So Gearid gives all your creatures tap abilities. I thought this one was cute. It's Patrol Signaler. This is quiet MVP of the deck. It is a two-mana Kithkin Soldier with an ability uh, that says one in white untap. Put a one-one white Kithkin Soldier Creature token into play. So it gives you a token, but it also gives you a way to untap it. Yeah, so you could use this multiple times. Mm -hmm. With however much mana that you have, you can untap, make a soldier, retap it, make a copy of the big token you made, untap it, make another soldier. Just keep going. And along those same lines, you could go infinite. What? No way! With Midnight Guard. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, untap Midnight Guard. You did it! Play a Perforos. Make a single token. Make a token with haste. You win. Pretty good. Yeah, you win. Yeah. Uh, Halo Fountain. 
<laughs> another way to win the game. I love this. Yeah, this is kind of similar to uh, the signal, patrol the signal patrol a little signal, bit. Yeah. It has three abilities. The first is white, tap, untap, and tap creature you control to create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. White, white, tap, untap, two tap creatures you control to draw a card, which is great. Tap two creatures, copy two tokens, mm-hmm. untap them, draw a card. And then white, 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 five white. Uh, pen, pentacle white. <laughs> <laughs> tap, uh, hail found, un- untap, 15 tap creatures you control, you win the game. So you can do that instant speed, Sweet. you can go to combat, swing with all your copies, untap them, and win the game. Nice. Well done. Yay! But you're, Midnight Guard is really the busted card here. <laughs> you're going to want um, a lot of mass untappers, too, so you can do this multiple times. You're probably running stuff like Reese that can make a token copy of stuff. Oh, yeah. And then you can do it on every single turn. So you probably want Drum Bellower and Seedborn Muse as well. That'll make your deck really go off. Yeah, this deck also has really complicated lines sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like you think, oh, I can only make a couple of 1-1s. One it's like, actually, you can make six 4-4s four this turn based on what you have on your board. So this is a deck I would definitely recommend gold fishing. If you make it, there's a great episode that just came out in the Command Zone yeah. podcast about gold fishing. You should look it up. Give it some love. Uh, the next one, he's back and he's banned now. He's banned. He's and been he's every a- color under the sun except black. And he's got the most like spaghetti western name now. Yeah. It's Kellen, the kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like holding one of those halo swords. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the, they're like the knot guns. Yeah, the knot guns. Yeah. <laughs> they, show, they shoot knots at each other. Yeah. They tie you up. <laughs> well, <laughs> they go around your ankles. And they make you trip and fall like in the old westerns. Yeah, it's not like not like the re- regular nope, knot. You said knot gun. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. That's not what I meant. Not. No, Kellen, stop <laughs> tying us up. It's Kellen with a K, like not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Green, white, and blue for a 3-3 three, three human fairy rogue. When did he become a fairy? Was he always a fairy? He's always a fairy. His dad's a fairy. Oh, that's right. He's half fairy. That's right. It's Oko. His mm-hmm. dad's Oko, by the way. Yes. So he is Kellen, the kid, comma, of Oko. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're off track. <laughs> Flying lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may cast a permanent spell with equal or lesser mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So this wants you to cast spells from elsewhere, and then you get to get free permanence from your hand that has equal or lesser mana value than whatever you just cast. Cool. This is a sweet commander. It's also extremely open-ended. So this is going to be the kind of thing that um, no matter what Kellen deck you're playing against, you're not going to be entirely sure what's in the 99. Yeah. It could be like you could build it around plot, which is a new mechanic in this set. You could build it around foretell or adventure, flashback, retrace, escape, suspend, rebound, cascade, discover, ah. uh, or just casting off the top of your library. That's right. Anywhere else other than your hand. Yeah. Wow. So, so there's a lot of different ways you could go here, huh? I had a lot of trouble sort of zeroing this uh, commander down um, to talk about what kind of deck it is because there's so many ways that you could build it. But I tried to make it clear like that there's three versions of this deck and you can kind of go in whatever direction you choose. Yeah, or mix and match a little bit of everything. Yeah. Kellen's cool too if you just like loved one set that had a bunch of adventures in it. Yeah. Like cool, I get to play all those cards now, which is kind of cool. I I like that there's a lot of flexibility here and there's a lot of opportunity for like neat moves. Yeah. Um this first version of it I think is going to be the toughest to build but it it lends itself well to Kellen. It's just like a control strategy mm-hmm. where you're using Fortell and you're using Flashback and you're that those kind of things to um further your board while interacting with what the, your opponent's doing. Yeah. Um so I think about this kind of like an Alondo the Seer deck. Yeah, so this is, well, there's a lot of text, we should read it. Two yeah. green and a blue, three, five, you can tap it, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand and put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. It gains when the last time counter is removed from it. If it's exiled, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you cast a creature spell this way, it gains haste until end of turn, and then you remove a time counter from each other card you own in exile. So you exile a card, and then every time you do it again, those cards will lose time counters, and they get closer to the, those ticking time bombs. So a lot of the Alondo decks that I've seen, like just suspend ramp spells with yeah. him. They'll just put a cultivate over there so they mm. don't spend mana on cultivate. They hold up, you know, interaction spells. Right. So they're always progressing their board and getting more resources, but they're not necessarily spending their mana on it. Mm-hmm. So it feels like that's how Kellen's going to be in this version of the deck. Um, and then you probably win with some sort of big foretell spell or uh, flashback spell, like an All Ruins Epiphany, yeah. which you can foretell, and then it gives you an extra turn and two birds. Yeah, and then you pay six mana for the Fortel, but the card's mana value is seven. Mm. So you can put a permanent card from your hand with seven or less or cast another spell. Planeswalker or something like that. And then the cool thing is 
you can just put Lance out too if you yeah. if you're early in the game. Um, Starnheim Unleashed is really good. You can make a bunch of four four white angel creature tokens. It foretells X X and white. So we always love any X spells that just makes a ton of angels. Yeah, and like you're putting Lance into play the whole game, so yeah. you do need some sort of big X spell top end, and this is great. You can play it from exile. Um, I love this card, by the way. I put it into every deck I can. This card card's sweet. Yeah, Woodland Acolyte, two in the white. It has an adventure side, which is just green, and you can put a permanent from your graveyard on top of your library. So already very powerful. And instant then, speed, too. Instant speed. And then you cast the permanent side, which Kellen loves, two in the white. It draws the card when it enters the battlefield as a creature. Nice. And you can cast the three mana creature from exile and put a land into play or yeah. put the thing you would just put onto yeah. the battlefield into play, right? Yeah, is yeah. This a, that's, is this a cast trigger? Mm-hmm. You may cast a permanent spell with equal or lesser mana value from your hand. It's whenever you cast. Yeah, you yeah. can't, you can't you get put, a cast in, trigger put in the play the that you put on top. That, yeah. that Unless you drew work. it somehow another yeah. way. <laughs> if you drew it a different way, you could do that. Yeah. Um, Brazen Borrower is a great interaction spell as well. It's going to give you those same effects. Yep. Um, oh, here's a way you can get that top card library. It's the reality chip. If reality chip helps with this kind of stuff. Because it plays from the top of the library. Vega the Watcher does the same thing. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand draw card... You I, could line that up so that you do that, and then Kellen Trigger happens, mm-hmm. and then you can do stuff. And then you can cheat that thing into yeah. play. Both of the Reality Chip and Vega the Watcher are going to help fuel this engine, because if you're dumping things from your hand all the time... you got to refill it. You really, really need to refill it, or your commander isn't doing anything, other than yeah. being 3 mana, 3-3 three, three flying lifelink, which is also okay. Kellen kind of reminds me of Chew Lane, by the way. I... It's not not true lane. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't true lane, but it's not not true lane. <laughs> yeah, it's a little harder to build than true lane. For um, sure. True lane so, just builds itself. Yes. Yeah. So, like, true lane, you're like, 101 drops. We've done it. Um, <laughs> I'm so good at this game. <laughs> I'm just, uh, Kellen is a little bit weirder. You do have to, like, jump through a hoop. Yeah, yeah. But it gives you a ton of value because you're you're putting in twice as much. As your opponents. You're getting twice as many spells as your opponents mm-hmm, are. And mm-hmm. if you're interacting with them as well, you're getting just two for one after two for one if yeah. you can keep your hand full. Um, so that's like the control version of this. I do think there's another version of this deck that's a lot more explosive yeah. that does Cascade. That's right. If you have Kellen out and you play an Apex Devastator, which just says Cascade <laughs> three times on it as a 10 mana spell. Yeah. Hope you have a hand. Yeah. <laughs> But you're just going to empty out, what, six or seven cards? Yeah, you cast, well, you cast four cards from Exile. Oh, four, four Cascade, You cast sorry. four Cascade triggers. And then that technically is four cards from four your hand. Four triggers from yeah. anywhere that's so not your hand. two lands, yeah. two, yeah, yeah. nuts. It's uh, it's bananas. And I you are going to be able to get to 10 mana because you're putting all these lands into play. Yeah. You're generating all this value with your commander. Um Apex Devastator, uh, Sakashima's Protege is the six mana clone oh, yeah. that has Any flash. Permanent. I love the cards with flash because you can do it on other people's turns and sneak in permanents that shouldn't have flash. Right. Um, it's worth noting that Kellen does cast the card from your hand. So you get cast triggers. So you do get the cascade triggers and you could snowball with it. Ah, oh, you just build all cascades. So you cascade, 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 and just keep going. Mm-hmm. The biggest trick, of course, is there's not as many Cascade cards in Bant as there would be in, like, Teamer or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you sort of run everything you can and, uh, you know, throw in some Discover stuff. I even looked at Hurl into History. Probably playable in this deck. I think it is. It's five mana for an instant. Counter target artifact or creature spell. Discover X, where X is that spell's mana value. Ah, uh, Discovering is also casting from somewhere that's not your hand. Exactly. So I don't normally love the five mana counters, even if they it's do get a up. ton of value. But in this deck that wants to be a little bit trickier, five mana to counter your thing, cast a spell from exile, and then cast another spell from your hand. Or put a land. Yeah. Or put a land into play is a pretty big blowout. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think that one is. Especially if you're holding up Sakashima's Protege at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. If you can fill the deck with flash uh, interaction, then it's going to be really good. Yeah, I do like that. Um, You put Extraordinary Journey in here, Mm -hmm. which is really interesting. It's a new card. XX Blue Blue from Woe. When it is about for you, you exile up to X target creatures. For each of those cards, its owner may play it for as long as it remains exiled. So it kind of like temporarily removes stuff. Mm -hmm. But it also allows you to exile stuff that's on your board. 
And then whenever one or more non-token creatures enter the battlefield, if one or more of them enter the battlefield from exile or is cast from exile, you draw a card, triggering only once each turn. So that also means that the creatures you made your opponents put away, when they cast them, you get to draw a card. Yeah. If you cast a card off a cascade, I believe you're casting it from yes, exile. Yes, you are. So you're drawing cards when you're, like, you'll draw cards off the first creature you cast from exile. It's also good with the adventure spells. Um, it's just a decent little draw engine in decks like this, especially if you're moving at flash speed. And it's flexible. You got to do it on your stuff, your opponent's stuff it kind of time walks them sometimes mm -hmm. and and it's also not one that draws that much ire because they're like okay i can still play this right. at its normal mana but then you get a draw card off it on their turn when they do it um, I did want to mention because they're really good in cascade decks, but they're also great with your commander. All of the um, suspend like fixed oh, that's moxes right. and soul rings are really, really good because you can cast them for free with your with commander or from your deck if you hit him off cascade. So soul talisman gives you a second soul ring in this deck. Lotus bloom gives you your first black lotus in this deck. Hey. Uh, and mox tantalite will give you a mox for like just a couple of Any box. color mox, yeah. Yeah. Um, so all of those you can cast for free with your commander, but it means that you get second copies of really busted mana rocks. So uh, probably worth running in almost every version of this. I'm down for it. Uh, this seems like a creature-heavy deck, so you want cards that also help you cast from anywhere outside of your hand. That could be at the top of your deck. We talked about the reality chip mm -hmm. earlier, but there's a lot of creatures that also do this, which is great because you can now... It's basically like if you do it multiple times in a turn, you could be drawing two, three cards off of this yeah. thing. I mean, talk about Chulane. If you have like an elven chorus that lets you cast creatures off the top yeah. of your library and you play a creature from the top of your library and cheat a creature into play from your hand or yeah. a land into play from your hand... Um, and and then that creature taps for mana. And there's a lot of things that do this. Augur of Autumn lets you play creatures off mm -hmm. the top of your library. Vizier of the Menagerie lets you do that same thing. It just helps you move through your deck really, really fast and yeah. means that you're going to be overwhelming your opponents with value before they're ready for you. Yeah, Kellen kind of is like, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's fine. And then Kellen just needs like a turn to really go from, uh-oh, it doesn't matter if we just remove Kellen, that opponent just put five things out. Yeah. Scary. Pretty scary. Um, oh, yeah, I, new card. They wanted to mention him. Yeah, it's the cutest version of this card I think that's I ever existed. I love him. The art is also incredible. It's Fibblethip, Lost on the Range. Ding, 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 one ding, ding, blue ding, blue ding, ding. for a 1-1 one, one with Ward 2. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. The top card of your library has Plot. The Plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may play non-land cards plot. from the top of your library. Yeah, Plot. 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 Uh, what does Plot do? <laughs> plot. It, it, so if you have a Sakura Tribe Elder on top of your library, you can pay one in a green, which mm -hmm. is Sakura Tribe Elder's uh, mana value. You can exile it. And then on the next turn, you can cast it for free from exile. Ah. So, so it's like you're plotting for it to come out. Exactly. So Fibblethip just lets you cast spells off the top of your library, basically. Constantly. You just don't get them until next turn. Yeah. But it will trigger Kellen. If you yeah, when you cast them from plot, yeah, plotting isn't a cast. I believe it's a. No, it just puts it somewhere it just else. Right? Put, yeah, yeah, it's like a foretell t yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yeah. You can't do this with land, so it'll it, you'll get stuck if you hit a land. But you will really turn through a lot of your deck and set up a really big turn. Yeah, because if you plot like two or three things, play Kellen and Ooh, then cast those three turn? things yeah, for yeah, free. Yeah. That's a huge turn. Do you have to cast it at a certain time? Uh, only on your turn. Okay, so that means you could plot stuff and then play Kellen and then cast all that stuff, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, very yeah. cool. So super open-ended, really, really powerful. Um, I, I think this is the first version of Kellen that I've been like, now that's a commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other Kellens are like, yeah, you can play it in a deck, yeah. but not as exciting as this Kellen. This Kellen, the kid, uh, will be interesting. And it's, again, a card that gets better over time because mm -hmm. they will create new things. Fortel was a relatively new mechanic from Kaldheim, right? So there's going to be other things that allow you to cast from Exile in the future. Yep. Uh, we've got quite a few more commanders that we're going to talk about, but we'll get to those after a few words from our sponsors. If you're watching this, that means you like games, specifically strategy card games. Yeah, and we've got a new one to share with you here that we've been playing around the office a ton. It's called Kinfire Delve Scorn Stockade. It's basically a dungeon run where you face a series of challenges before taking on a powerful final boss. And it really is perfect for magic players. It lets you use your skills from commander, but in a co-op setting that rewards you for good threat assessment, teamwork, and planning ahead. Scorn Stockade 
arcade is easy to learn, but you've got to be smart if you want to win, because the challenges change every single time you play. We've jammed a ton of games and they've all felt different, which is pretty impressive considering it's only 20 bucks. Yeah, it is an amazingly high quality product at that price. The cards, the dice, even the box, they all feel premium. On its own, Scorn Stockade supports up to two players, but if you pick up the previous Kinfire Delve set, Vainglory's Grotto, you can combine them and play with four people. So it's great for mixing things up with your commander pod. Exactly, it'll give you a chance to work together and, you know, heal the wounds from those shady political deals that you made. Uh, that's more of a you problem, Josh. What? No, everyone's always happy with all the deals they make with me, aren't they? Order Kinfire Delve Scorn Stockade at kinfiredelve.com and use code COMMAND10 at checkout for 10% off. That's a whole lot of game for just 20 bucks. Plus, pick up the first set, Bangalore's Grotto, for the full four-player experience. Again, that's kinfiredelve.com and use code COMMAND10 to score 10% off. Okay, I'm going to fly. All right, I'm off to see the Wizards. Heading to Seattle for the weekend. <gasps> Josh, no! You can't go to Seattle. It's not like it here in LA. Sometimes it rains there! <gasps> uh, that's fine, because I just got these new shoes and jacket from Vessi. Oh! oh. Yep, with my Vessi Stormburst shoes, I'm ready for anything. They're comfortable, look great, and on top of that, they're waterproof. You know I'm a practical guy, so I like having one pair of shoes I can really depend on. And Vessi's are the whole package. You can't beat their versatility. I mean, look, you spend a huge amount of time in your shoes, right? So you want a pair that's stylish, but still feels good on the move. Well, with my Vessi's, I can throw them on every morning and never worry about where the day's gonna take me. And on those rare occasions when it does rain in LA, I'm like automatically twice as prepared as everyone else. They've really become my go-to footwear. They're perfect for everything from the office to exploring a new city to going on a nature hike. I didn't know you hiked. Oh, I don't. I just like to look like I might. Oh, that tracks. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi Stormburst and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash commandzo. Get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to stay cool and dry. Man, these magic hunts really keep us on the go, huh? Definitely. We've had Philly, Minneapolis, Vegas, Chicago, even Barcelona, and of course, Amsterdam pretty soon. But you know what comes with us every time? Oh yeah, of course I know. It's the Cube of Consequence! Oh. No, no, that wasn't until Minneapolis. I was talking about our Raycon wireless earbuds. Oh yeah, of course. I take my Raycons everywhere. With their eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life, they're perfect for a long plane ride. Or they'll listen to music while exploring a new city. With their optimized gel tips, they fit so comfortably, I almost forget I'm wearing them. And their noise isolation is perfect if you want to tune out the traffic and tourist chatter. Or use awareness mode if you want to take it all in and not get hit by a car. The best part is the audio quality is top tier, but they're just half the price of other premium brands. So if I misplace them on a trip, I don't have to worry too much about buying another pair. So when you're planning your next big trip or even just a busy day, don't forget the most important thing. Yes, the Cube hey, 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 Josh, we, we talked about this. Right, yes, the Raycons. Go to buyraycon.com slash command today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right, you'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash command. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. All right, my new deck list is complete. Now, let's see which cards I don't already own and buy them. Wait. How'd you do that without going through a million boxes? Oh, I just use Architect. They make it super easy to upload and manage your collection. Then when you're done brewing a deck, you can sort it by collection status to see what you already have. So this group is just cards you don't own. Yep, I just click buy this stack and it takes me right to Card Kingdom. Whoa. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. Welcome back, dear listener. We're on the junction, Thunder Junction. <laughs> Come on down to Thunder Junction. Thunder is beautiful. I love Thunder. All right. Um, this let's talk next, about the next, this one. next commander is a cutie patootiest in the whole dang range. Yeah, this is cute. This looks like it's from Infinity. I know. It doesn't even look like a magic card. I love it. Yeah, loot, the key to everything. It's going to be Teamer, so green, blue, and red for a 1 2 with Ward 1. It's a Beast Noble. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of card types among other non-land permanents you control. You may play those cards this turn. Okay, cares about card types. Commander has nine legal card types, um, but loot doesn't care about lands, instants, and sorceries, which means that there's only going to be six, uh, like you can maximum impulse mm -hmm. draw six on your upkeep, but that is a huge amount of cards. Of course, you have to control an artifact, a battle, a creature, an enchantment, a planeswalker, and a kindred spell, yeah. but that would be sweet. Yeah, to impulse six. Yeah. Um, so yeah, loot comes down on turn three, ideally. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to want to have at least other card types on the battlefield before that happens, so you get the impulse draw the moment it gets back to your upkeep. 
Yeah, loot's really interesting because it's all impulse draw, and you only have that turn. You do, there's oh, no right. you there's no do dallying it. with yeah. this. You're going to impulse draw a lot, but you really want to be able to cast as many as you can. So I think efficiency is going to be a really big part of this deck. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, you want stuff down on one or two that is going to start racking up the the type counts. Yeah. So I I think that ramp on one that is permanent based is going to be a big deal. I think wild growth is great in this deck. It's an aura that makes a land tap for more. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, Those ex- auras are all going to be great, especially the yeah. one mana versions. Uh, exploration, even burgeoning are going to be really good because that means that you can play an enchantment on one. You can get lands down. You can get loot out on two, probably. And at least you're doing one impulse draw because you have one enchantment out. Absolutely. Um, I really like having something like Ornithopter of Paradise mm-hmm. because it's a creature and an artifact. So that's two. So that allows you to get loot down on turn three. And then you'll impulse draw at least two out of it. Well, I guess loot always counts. No, oh, it doesn't, doesn't count, count itself. itself. Sorry. No. Yeah, so you do want Ornithopter of Paradise in that case. Yeah. Uh, Sanctum Weaver does the same thing. This deck will probably have a few enchantments in it, so maybe it'll tap for more than green. But otherwise, this is just a two mana yeah. looter that taps for one mana of any color and impulse draws you two cards. Yeah, I mean, if you play Dryad of the Elysian Grove, that also is an enchantment creature. So that's going to give you those two types and be an enchantment for Sanctum Weaver. Plus, Dryad is, like, extra land drops in this deck is going to be really good. Because really you're important. impulse drawing six cards, right? You can play lands from this. Oh, yeah. Right? Play those cards this Great. turn. So if you exile a ton of lands, you want to be able to play as many of those as possible. So yeah. you're burgeoning, maybe not as good, but exploration, Dryad of the Elysian Grove, those kind of things that lets you get those lands out of exile and get maximum value off of your commanders can be really good. Yeah, really good. Okay, so when it comes to just loading your deck up with multiple types. We're going to name some stuff here. They're not necessarily great for the deck, but just lets you know that there are a lot of cards that have multiple types on them because just having a card that says artifact on it will give you one card, but if it says enchantment artifact, Mm -hmm. you can get two cards off it. Um, Now, again, no Urza Saga, no artifact lands. They are lands, so they don't count towards loot. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to enchantment artifacts, you have the uh, God series of Biden of Thassa, Bow of Nylea, Hammer, Perforos. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to creatures that are artifacts, we talked about Ornithopter of Paradise, but you also have like Bray's Apprentice, which also allows you to mm-hmm. get stuff off and also makes a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token when it enters. Um, so you kind of get some doubling up there. Crashing Drawbridge might be good in a deck like this because you're playing a bunch of spells off the top of your deck. You want to give them a haste. Um, Auton Soldier is really interesting. It's like a new card from Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. It can enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it isn't legendary, and it's an artifact in addition to its other type, and has Myriad. Mm. So you can copy your commander and get the trigger twice, yeah. or copy an opponent's commander, and still have an artifact creature at the end of it. Yeah. And then enchantment creatures, Anax, Harden in the Forge, Archetype of Aggression, Dried of the Elysian Grove. This is just a scryfall search, I think, at the end of the day, and looking mm-hmm. through the colors and being like, oh, this would work well in this deck, or oh, this is the direction I want to take it. The other thing I was looking at was not just cards that have multiple types, it's um, cards of one type that make another type. Uh-huh. So I put Loyal Apprentice on this list. Oh, um, very good. It's a little awkward on turn two because you don't make the Thopter until... The well, next. No, no, you you know you, you play Loyal Apprentice, you play Loot on three, you make the Thopter, and then the next, and then the next turn, turn you have get. a creature and an artifact. The best one I found that comes down before Loot <laughs> is this weird saga, and I want to talk about it. It's Yosha Declares War. Right. It's a two-mana saga that on its first chapter makes a zero to Ornithopter, which is an <laughs> artifact creature. Hey! So if you play Yosha De- Declares War you get and three. then loot, you impulse draw three on yeah. turn four, which is pretty sweet. That's really sweet. This might be one of the best cards in the deck already. I know! I was like, this weird little saga is actually incredible in this deck. <laughs> yeah. And then you can tap the... Yeah, all the the first part, you can read ahead on this, but the first chapter of the saga is definitely the most relevant. Mm. Yeah, it just gives you a lot of types all in one box it means you're going to be impulse drawing yeah. maximum amounts you don't really want to gum up the synergy of your deck with a ton of these but you want to make sure that when you're building you're doing a huge variety of yeah. types like I would include some battles I would include like Renin 6 is incredible in this deck oh, obviously yeah. it's a very Plains powerful Walker. card but the fact that this is like a two mana thing that comes down before loot gives you a difficult to hit mm-hmm. uh, type um, and it's probably gets you fetch lands back because uh, you're in three colors and you're yeah. in green. That's awesome. Play Invasion of Call Time. Yeah. You want those cards for you impulse those, to draw. Yeah. yeah, I do. It's great. Um, uh, okay, now we'll Segovia is probably good too. Segovia is very good. Yeah. Yep. Gives you creatures and a battle and it, you can cast your spells with Convoke. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, Cash from Exile. So we talked a little bit about this in another one of our commanders. Yes, this is the same type of stuff that we talked about in Bruce. Um, because there's not a lot to go off of on loot, you could go this direction where you include, you know, the delayed blast fireball that we talked about, passionate archaeologist, mm-hmm. even like Faldorn, Dread, Wolf, Herald. But I could also just see loot being sort of designed to be a stormy type deck just and just impulse drawing, like just seeing way more cards and outvaluing its opponents. Yeah. So it, it would be pretty low to the ground. You're going to be casting a lot of, you know, enchantments and stuff like cheap things Mana quickly. Mana and stuff, yeah. So it's sort of up to you how you close the door with loot. It can be as powerful or as or as sort of goofy and cute as you want it to you be. You can spin your wheels a lot in this deck too you if you're not really, careful. You really, really can. Yeah. Uh, just keep the curb, curve low and make sure you have a balance of creature types and you can do something really cool with loot. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right. All right. Uh, this next one is uh, uh, so neat. Yeah, uh, we've never seen anything like this before in the Magic card. It's yeah. Obeka, Splitter of Seconds. She's going back for more. <laughs> She's real hungry. One, a blue, black, and a red for a 2-5 Ogre Warlock with Menace. Whenever Obeka attacks... Oh, no, sorry. Whenever Obeka deals combat damage to a player, you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. What? Neat. So she's a 2-5. If you hit someone for two, after combat, you go upkeep, upkeep, and then back to second post-combat main phase. Yeah. So you get two additional upkeeps if she deals two damage, but if you get more damage on Obeka, you take more upkeeps. It's awesome. Whoa. I love that it works the turn that like y- you, can, you hit. can hit with yeah. Obeka. So you can play something first main hit and get those upkeeps right away. Yeah, because a lot of cards that say at the beginning of your upkeep, it sucks. You play it, you wait to your upkeep to get that thing. We just talked about loot, which is at the beginning of your upkeep. Mm-hmm. So Obeka allows you to have the cards that have upkeep triggers that same turn if you're playing them and then hitting with her. So uh, the first thing we wanted to talk about with Obeka is let's make her bigger so we can have more upkeeps. Yeah, Obeka <laughs> hitting like for five or six. It's like, you You're have like, five what? upkeeps? <laughs> what are you doing Holy with that? moly. Uh, Tavern Brawler is a background that works. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. This creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is that card's mana value. You may play that card this turn. So you still have a regular upkeep, which is going to buff Obeka, mm-hmm. uh, and it's going to impulse draw you that card. And then on your post-combat upkeeps, you get like you just get to impulse draw even more cards. Five cards, six cards, Seems or whatever. Sweet. Yeah. Ring of Valkus, a uh, crypt creature has haste, so you can play this on the same turn. You play, you're swinging the Becca. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1 1 counter on a crypt creature if it's red. Nice. Haste. Hey, yeah. Buffs. Cheap. We love Ring of Valkus in this deck. Um, Call of the Ring, speaking of rings, at Seems the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you, so you can instantly get to like multiple. So fast. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you choose a creature as a ring bearer, you can pay two life if you do draw a card. So this is just drawing you multiple cards for life in this deck. Pretty sweet. And it gives you evasion for your commander. Uh, she has menace, but yeah. make sure that she connects. Of course, if you want even more upkeeps, the classic way to do it is Paradox Haze. That just gives you regular beginning of turn upkeeps. Regular upkeeps. Gross. Gross. No way. Um, Okay, so we want cool upkeep triggers. And we want, uh, there's a lot of permanents out there that if you give your opponent, because the way they balance upkeep cards is by saying once per turn. Mm -hmm. So a Bega busts a bunch of cards wide open because they're not meant to be like this. Right. I, it's, I think there's a permanent version of this and there's a non-permanent version of this, which we'll talk about, but uh-huh. the permanents are wild. I mean, Bitter Blossom is w- crazy in this deck. Yeah, Bitter Blossom, Swing with Becca. you make two 1-1 fairies that yeah. same turn. And then next minimum. turn you make another one. And then you make, th- and then Obeka hits again. I do three. think that this deck is going to be a little soft on defense and there are a lot of effects like Bitter Blossom that cause you to pay life. Yeah. So having a bunch of 1-1 flying blockers that are just like, don't hit me. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I do think is pretty helpful. Uh, or maybe some gain life effects mm-hmm. like this one. Yeah, Twilight Prophet, the beginning of your upkeep if you have the city's blessings, so let's turn more permanents. Reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. Each opponent loses X life and you gain X life for X of that card's mana value. So this could be a win the game card with Obeka. Absolutely. Yeah. You hit Obeka, you buff her up with a sword or something, you get four upkeeps, four cards off the top, you gain that much life and they lose that much life. Everybody does. Least, yeah, everyone does. I definitely think this is how the deck is going to win is with these repeated drain or damage yeah. triggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to include this little package because I think it's neat. We've already talked about Estrid's Invocation, yep. which on your upkeep, you can send Flicker it away it. and bring it back as a copy of something. It's really good with the courts, uh, yeah. which say when they enter the battlefield, you become the monarch. And then they have an upkeep trigger that's usually like, if you're like, 
there's a medium one if you're not the monarch, but if you're the monarch, there's a super trigger. Yeah. So Court of Embrith is a great one. When it enters, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 3-1 red knight creature token, sure. And then if you're the monarch, it deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of creatures you control. Oh. So on your first upkeep, you use Estra's Invocation to blink the Court of Embrith. Now you're the monarch. On the second one, you make a knight and deal damage. On the third one, you make another knight and deal more damage. Well, actually, no. Estra's Invocation becomes the Court of Embrith, so you get twice the number of the triggers. You make more knights. Yeah. You make two knights. Yeah. Seems busted. Court of Lockthwain is really nuts, too. Just look at the courts, because normally you're like, I wouldn't play this because I can't keep the monarch. But now you get to play it that same turn. You have a Becca out swing, and then you instantly get the triggers, and you're the monarch that same turn. Seems really, really powerful. Yeah, real, real powerful. Uh, I did want to do a little bit of a warning. Beware negative upkeep triggers on very powerful cards we play a lot in Commander, like Mana Crypt. Well. I don't play Man of Crypt anymore. Or but the One Ring. I play that one a bunch. <laughs> or Mystic Remora. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mystic Remora, not great in this deck. Just the... don't throw in all the regular stuff and not double check them to make sure they're not going to hurt you a whole lot. Yeah, Man of Crypt could potentially deal nine damage to you in a single turn, you, you know, with a regular Rebecca. So, yeah, be careful for sure. Um, that's hilarious. <laughs> I know. I was I was playing against my friend who has a he has a Grixis upkeep trigger deck uh-huh. uh, with the Doctor Who cards. Oh right. And somebody He's gonna had, love this deck. I know somebody had six mana Chandra that puts an <laughs> emblem on you when it deals one oh, damage on your upkeep. upkeep? Yeah, and he yeah, had yeah. like seven upkeeps where he's like, oh. I'm gonna take so much. I'm dying for this. Uh, so you gotta be gotta be a little careful. Yeah. So the permanent version. Look at the courts. Uh, there's also other cards that just just look up at the beginning of your upkeep. Mm. On Scryfall, you'll see tons of options there. And it's cool because this also feels flexible. You get to build it the way you want. You can mm. be, if, are you trying to only hit with a Becca for two each time, or do you want to really buff a Becca up, give her a Colossus Hammer or something, and Sweet. take 12 upkeeps and win with your Twilight Prophet? That seems awesome, too. Yeah. The other way that you can build this deck is sort of like the Doctor Who ones, um, and you can build around Suspend. Yeah, because Suspend counters get removed during your upkeep. So something like a Joyra of the Gitu probably goes in any version of this deck because yeah. it lets you exile non-land cards from your hand and you put four time counters on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can go through this not in four turns, in, in two? Two? One? Yeah, one. Depends on how big uh, you can make Obeka. But you can start just casting spells by paying two colorless mana at instant speed. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Joyra's wild in this deck. Really, really fun. Um, same with Rousing Refrain, which is kind of like Jessica's Will at Home, because mm-hmm. you exile it with three time counters out on it after you cast it. So that might mean if you can get Becca up one extra power, you get to cast Rousing Refrain twice in a single turn. Yeah. And so you get to have red mana for each a card in the target opponent's hand. And you don't lose the mana, by the way, until steps and phases end. This card's really, really powerful, especially if you can get to that pivotal three upkeeps. Yeah. Rousing uh, Refrain, use the extra mana to play an equipment, equip it, swing with Obeka. Cast it again, make cast a whole bunch again, more mana. More and mana. it just keeps going back on suspend and getting cast again and giving yeah. you more and more value. Honestly, if you're doing this version, you're playing all the refrains. There's also one that draws two cards. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're really just trying to loop those as many times as possible. Um, right. Yeah, and obviously this one's going to be a little bit more spell-based. You're probably not doing all the enchantment stuff. You're playing stuff like Exalted Flamer of the Seench. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a Warhammer card. At the beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. Yeah, a bunch. Pretty Whenever sweet. you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. So that's nice, too. But mostly you're just redrawing all of your instant Three cards each turn. Upkeep. Yeah, pretty Seems sweet. Seems wild. Um, okay, yeah, that's Obeka. I think we'll see a lot of different crazy builds for Obeka coming forward. So we just covered the very basics here. As always, leave comments in the comment section if you have some cards that you think would make this deck really sweet. She is super sweet. Okay. Uh, speaking of familiar faces, uh, he's back. There's a lot of them, by the way, there, in this Yeah, set. we've seen a lot of people in cowboy hats. Uh, this one is Riku of many paths. Hats. Oh, paths. Pap, right. pap. Hats. Hats, too. He wears a lot of hats, especially he does when he's wear. doubled. Good point. 
Uh, Question he hats. is Teamer. Green, blue, red for a 3-3. Three, three. It says, whenever you cast a modal spell, choose up to X, where X is the number of times you chose a mode for that spell. The first mode on Riku is exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play it. Hmm. The next one is put a plus on counter on Riku of many paths. It gains trample until end of turn. Sure. And the third one is make a bird. Hooray! Who knew Riku was into birds? Riku, birds. Riku of many birds. So, uh, on Riku, you can't pick the same mode more than once. If you play a spell that says choose three, you have to pick one of each. You can't just mm-hmm. go bird, bird, bird. Um, bird is the word. Bird is the word. So, uh, there's a lot of modal spells. You can also just look up type modal, I think, on Scryfall. Yeah, um, I searched choose three, choose one or more. There's a, uh, yeah, it's function modal will give you, um, or otag modal, I think, yeah. will give you uh, all of the spells that are modal in these colors. The, the, the two best ones here for sure is exiling the cards that you can play until your next turn and making birds, though. Yeah, definitely. Th- those are probably going to be your most commonly chosen. So, I think, honestly... You, it feels really good to pick three to play like your fiery confluences and your mystery mm-hmm. confluence, which I do think you play in this deck. But I think it, as long as you're choosing two on the spell, it's going to be worth it. It can yeah. trips and you make a bird that you could sack for mana or you could, you know, build up a, a board state and win the game that way. Or make big Riku. Or make big Riku. That could be how. He is taking many paths. That's just a less commonly taken path. So let's talk about some of the modal spells that you can choose three things from Mm -hmm. so you get the most value out of Riku. Uh, Collective Defiance, Inscription of Abundance, Verdant Confluence. A lot of confluences, a lot Mm -hmm. of inces in this. uh, (laughs) Abundance, (laughs) Defiance, Confluence. Abundance. Um, They're all very good in their own different ways, Mm -hmm. and they allow you to, again, choose a bunch of things. This is going to be an interesting one to build because I do think like all of these spells do a wild variety of Yeah, they're not very focused. Ra- they, 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 you just sort of choose what's best at the time and I think if you're building this deck you really want to play like really pilot a deck. Yeah. Cuz it is going to be really tricky. You're like, I when do I cast this? What do I use? What do I pick on Riku? It's I have sort of going to be like in front of me. Huh. It's going to be like uh, kind of like a super friends deck, honestly. They don't uh, necessarily yeah. work together, but there's a lot of choices and a lot of potential lines, a lot of ways to go wrong. Yeah. Um you probably but, also want a lot of cards that help you draw discard, recycle cards, mm-hmm. and the exile on Riku helps out a lot as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gets a little awkward when you exile a modal spell that was not good right now, but could be better like five turns from now but yeah that's the many paths you're taking you <laughs> <laughs> you get to decide um let's uh, talk about something to choose two you can choose, choose two things uh one of my favorite modal spells they printed recently was flame of anor this card is yeah. cracked and riku is a wizard he's a wizard one blue red choose one if you control a wizard you may choose two instead perfect we've got one uh, target player draws two cards destroy target artifact or deals five damage to target creature this Kill is a really thing, draw flexible. two cards make a bird impulse draw yeah. oh my god insane amounts of value right mm. there jessica's will just Classic. by itself has two it's a mold spell it turns out you can do both of them and then choose two extra things jessica's will plus the impulse draw is sweet yeah I mean, that is a huge turn. You got to figure out what to do with this red mana because I do think your colors are going to be all over the place in this deck. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, Uh, yeah. You may run something that just filters mana for you. Um, Along the lines of Flames of Anor is Prismari Command, which is also great. You can... Mm. uh, Atarka's Command is also really good. All the commands. All the commands. I like this one a lot. Artistic Refusal. Mm -hmm. This was cool. Four blue blue. It's an instant with Convoke. And you're going to be making burbs. So you can tap those to choose one or both. Counter target spell, draw two cards, discard a card. Just seems like pretty good value, especially later on when you've built up the board. Artistic Refusal and Mystic Confluence are both just great when you get extra, extra value out of it. Again, like uh, with Kellen, this is going to have a lot of keywords that you can keep an eye out for. The big ones that I looked at was Escalate, Entwine, and the new one oh, yeah. from this set is Spree. Spree! Which is pretty sweet. And the candy I do not like. Oh, <laughs> have you don't ever had buy Spree? Sprees. Yeah, I, don't. Of course I've had Sprees. Well, some people, you never know. Missed sprees? That's the worst Halloween candy. <laughs> no. The worst Halloween candy are the yeah. little bananas that can't come in runs. No, the bananas are great. They're the, the worst. The bananas are the best run, Jimmy. No, they're obviously not the best run. <laughs> yes, they are. How are they the best run? They don't even taste like bananas. They don't have to taste like bananas. They taste like candy. Apparently, that is what bananas used to taste like. 
That's is what I the heard. banana runt? Yeah. How does runts know that? Well, because apparently bananas had to get in order to stop them from like decomposing or getting yeah. infested. They had to like genetically modify them to the point where they weren't the old banana tasting. Oh yeah, bananas today are freaks. It's like yeah. corn. Corn today is freaks too. Yeah. It is not what corn. Have used you to heard the like. corn runt? It doesn't exist. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, many paths. Like uh, I many... can't believe you chose the banana path with runts. Yeah, oh, look. Oh, man. We're learning a lot today. Well, you know what that means? That means if we share our runts, we're going to have our perfect runts. That's a good point. Runt up! <laughs> uh, like Riku, this deck is going to be dirtily. Um, <laughs> it's going to do a lot of stuff, and One it's going to be pretty hard walks. to play. Uh, and I was like, how do you win with this deck in a way yeah. that feels flavorful and isn't like... With modal spells, too? Yeah, I, so yeah. I looked I looked at some modal spells. You're making all these birds. I do think you pick a bird every single time because it is your Just only to, give, to yeah. further the board. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I think every time you choose a mode, you pick bird first. Yeah. Um, Unless you really need to hit land drops or something and yeah. you're missing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could absolutely see doing like bird counter if you're like, I'm out of mana, that's it. Yeah. Um, but really the only way you're furthering the board is by making birds. So I was like, okay, we get Return of the Wild Speaker is a modal spell. That's also a bit of an overrun for all your birds. Yeah, and if you chose to build up Riku for whatever reason, you can then draw a bunch of cards. Of cards. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, so sorry, I, it's non-human. Sorry, sorry, Riku, oh, yeah. you're a human. You can draw one off of your bird. You're overrunning uh, <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the wild speaker. Tooth and nail. Tooth, it's modal. It is modal <laughs> for nine mana. Yeah. And so you get you get a bird that then gets crater hoofed. Exactly. All right. So that I was like, tooth and nail is not n- normally a card that I would put in a commander deck. Yeah. But if you're looking for a win con that feels kind of flavorful and you get like crater hoof and uh, I don't know, Avenger of Zendikar or something like yeah, that, yeah. that is a way that you could sort of concisely win a game. We with should this note deck. that you can. We didn't mention this, but there are modal spells that just choose one. And you yeah. still get another, you get an exile or a yeah. bird or whatever. So yeah. that's, it's not bad to include choose one spells in this deck too. Yeah. As long as it's choose. Yeah. Mod yeah, rule yeah, yeah. wins games is also modal. modal. It's yep. also a choose one. You pick big things or the little things, you steal them all and you attack and you hope that's enough. Yep. Uh, the other thing is you could really lean into the tokens of it all. And every time you cast uh, a, a spell, you make a big token, uh, like mm-hmm. a Shark Typhoon or a Dika, I think is where you want to go here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's less of like a Talrind deck, which is best with like cheap spells that you chain together. Yeah. This is going to be a lot of like three to five mana spells because generally when it's modal, it's a little bit less mana efficient. Yeah. Um, so I think you want to be rewarded for casting more valuable spells. So bigger tokens, more value. You. At the very least, you're not going to ever really be out of stuff to do or you choices to make. Yeah, you will have many decisions in this <laughs> deck. So if you like that kind of game, then go for it. Yes. All right. Now, again, another infinity looking commander. I know. I love this card, though. Yeah, it's a beautiful card. Uh, I love the art. It's not done by James Wong. It's done by Eno Wong, my oh. cousin, I guess. <laughs> Or sister, <laughs> spelled the same way. It's just your middle name. It's just <laughs> James Ina Wong. <laughs> Heck yes. It, it, yeah, sorry to both James and Ina. Your art's amazing. All right, Roxanne, Starfall, Savant, three a red and a green for a 4-3 cat druid. Whenever Roxanne enters the battlefield or attacks, create a tapped colorless artifact token named Meteorite. With when Meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target, and it has the ability to tap, add one mana of any color. And then the second part, whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, add one mana of any type that artifact token produced. This is how power corrupt magic has gotten. <laughs> Meteorite was a card. Five mana card. Yeah. There's the battlefield, deals two damage to any target, and adds a mana of any color. Yeah. And now we've got a five mana commander that makes these when she enters and when she attacks. They're just tapped, however. They enter tap. But the second part. But they tap for an additional mana when they tap them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we should note that this works with treasures. Yes, that is the that is the kicker here. Is the meteorites are cute and is the R- Roxanne joke? I love that she makes rocks. Rocks. Her name is Roxanne. Uh, but basically, whenever you crack a treasure, you make two mana instead. Uh, Gruel treasures is sort of a known and loved thing in Commander. Yep. Just so, look up the other card. Jolene, plundering plunderer. You got ro- Roxanne and Jolene. Why don't you turn Jolene. on the meteorite? Yeah. This is just songs and treasures. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, oh my gosh! You can predict Jolene, the next yeah. one. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've seen Gruel treasures before, and of course you're going to put some treasure stuff in here. But I did want to sort of focus on the meteorite side of this card. Yeah. Because w- we know how to build a Gruel treasures deck. Yeah. If you put a bunch of treasure makers in this deck, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. 
But, but those meteorites. What if you want to make more meteorites and do stuff with like the the when did they enter the battlefield? Yeah. Um, really, really great in this deck is City of Death. This is a Doctor Who card. Yeah, so it's a saga with six chapters on so it. So many. The first one is create a treasure token, but then each one after that from two to six is create a token that's a copy of target non-saga token you control. Sweet. So that means your meteorites. Every single turn you get another one. Or another treasure. Or meteorites. Or meteorites, yeah. I mean, I think making meteorites every single turn is really, really powerful, especially if you're making them with your commander. They enter tapped, they kill a thing or ping somebody in the face. Yeah. And set and up for the next rock. turn. They, where they tap awesome. for two, yeah. Uh, like Bruce, she is an ETB ability and an attack ability, so you want to make sure that she is safe. She's a 4-3. Oh, yeah. So flicker. So you can play Sword of Commander at home, uh, Sword of Hearth and Home. <laughs> <laughs> which allows you to flicker the cards uh, as well as get lands on the battlefield. So this deck is like turbo ramp, make a ton of meteorites that mm-hmm. ramps you even more, and you're killing stuff. Feels kind of controly, actually, to be honest. Kind of controly. I think this is a big mana deck that is going to be kind of slow and grindy. Yeah. Um, there's a treasure version of this deck that is obviously more explosive. You could put in Goldspan Dragon, make your treasures super treasures. Tap for three. Uh, you could do the Reaver Cleaver is really good with your commander. Oh, yeah. Whenever you do is combat damage, you create that many treasure tokens. Ooh, mm-hmm. gives it trample, too. Yikes. Gives you all those treasures, and they tap for more mana. Uh, Inspired Tinkering is busted with your commander because oh Impulse gosh. draws three, makes three treasures, and those tap for more. So now you are up mana and have Impulse three cards until your next turn. Yeah, same goes for Unexpected Windfall and Big Score. Both do the same thing, basically. Completely free. Yeah, completely free. That's just wild. I can't believe that they worded this in a way that allows <laughs> the treasures to tap because you're technically tapping it for mana. Yeah. Yikes. I looked it up. I was like, there's no way this works Finally, with Finally, they nerfed gold tokens. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's I, all... <laughs> I was like, there's no way it works with treasures. But if you get Jahira, you could tap them for mana. Yeah, and yeah, then it's yeah. like, no, it just works. No, Never it mind. just works. You don't need no, no Jahira necessary. <laughs> Although Jahira probably also good in this deck. Probably. Yeah, why? Why not? Now, there also are creatures that make token artifacts, like Svela Ice Shaper, which yeah. creates mana liths. So, and then you can eventually use Svela to basically do a, you know, a Golos type thing Mm -hmm. where you look at spells on top of your library and you can cast things uh, for free once you have, again, big mana, which you will have. Eight mana is not hard to get to in this deck for sure. Yeah, I think Svel is great in this deck. It's going to make ma- mana rocks early. It's almost free to make them. It's three to tap to make a mana rock that taps for two with your commander yeah. on the board. Ooh. And then it's a great mana sink. Yeah, and then having activated abilities on top of that where you can sink the mana into mm-hmm. is where you're really going to bust ahead. Uh, Jimmy. Yeah. We've done it. It's a deck for Saranth Great Worm. Finally. I think it might actually be. No, this probably is. This is a six mana, seven, six gruel trample worm that says whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a tapped power stone token. Oh, that's right. Anyone playing Anyone. Land. Wow. So now anytime any land enters the battlefield, you get a power stone that taps for two power stone mana. Which is really good with Svela. It's really good with Svela. I think it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of like artifact type stuff going on. Yeah. We've, we've already talked about equipment and uh, this next card is Skyclave Relic makes token rocks. Yeah. I think you're going to have enough places to put the Power Stone mana if you really focus on using it. Mm-hmm. And Sarenth Great Worm is so cool. We were so worried about it when it was printed. Do you remember when people oh, freaked out about that? <laughs> what are we, and it's like, well, it's already got restrictions. Yeah, yeah. And I've never seen it played I've once. never seen it. Until in Roxanne called it It's into time. Being. Um, now, if you're going to make a bunch of meteors, or treasures, blah, if you want to make a bunch of meteors like a cool person, because <laughs> rocks rock, you can double them. Panharmonicon is busted in this deck, because your commander comes in, makes two rocks, and then when the rocks come in, they deal twice oh, as much yeah! damage. Oh, yeah! So now you're dealing four damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, then no, no, you, you're doing eight damage, eight damage when your yeah. commander enters the battlefield. If you have parallel lives on top of that, you're doing like 16 or something. What? Uh, second harvest because they are tokens that are being created mm-hmm. so that's pretty good here not just token decks that like second harvest token meteorite decks too I do think this is an amulet of vigor deck because then your power stones come in untapped yep. and your meteorites come in untapped Saren's great worm even better now yeah <laughs> busted you can use a power stone to cast your amulet of vigor yeah uh, and then I guess if you just want I'm sure you can figure it out but like the clock of omens unwinding clock deck has a lot of ways to untap artifacts. Mm. If you have, again, ways to untap things and sink it into activated abilities, you might be running this sort of package. Yeah. It's going to make a lot of mana. The deck definitely makes mana and probably kills a lot of creatures with meteorites. So how do you kill people outside of the meteorites? Flavorfully, Comet Storm? 
Oh, Calm Meteor Storm. Yeah. When you think about it. You can sink, all, not your Power Stone mana, but you can sink all of your Meteorite mana into a Comet Storm, which seems hilarious, and you probably use a lot of treasure mana to do that as well. Yeah, the Meteorites, every time they land, they're like, there's more coming, and they're like, what do you mean there's more coming? It's like, there's more of us on the way. <laughs> there's a whole storm waiting. Here they are. You definitely want like reckless fire weavers and that kind of thing to deal more damage when yeah. your rocks are coming into the battlefield. And again, if you're doing the treasure thing, Rose Room Treasure is very good in any deck that mm -hmm. wants treasures because if you have three creatures under the battlefield, you have gives you a mana sink for all of that mana yeah, that you're making. Yeah, the X damage on the third artifact that comes in. The Brothers War you mentioned here, which is great, creates two Power Stone tap, to tap Power Stone tokens, and then uh, the next phase is eventually you get to the third one, which is Brothers War deals X damage to any target and X damage to any other target where X is the number of artifacts you control. So everyone just knows the meteors are coming for you. Yeah. Uh, the final thing that we have to mention is if you can make a token copy of a Basalt Monolith, which isn't super easy in Gruul, but it's possible, Yeah. Uh, you can make infinite colorless mana. Hooray, because it taps for four and only requires three to untap. That was easy. We did it. Yeah, you can do Cogwork Assembler to make a ton of just little two threes. Well, the right? Cogwork Assembler, you pay seven, you make a copy of your Basalt Monolith. Oh, now you have infinite mana, oh, okay. and you can make infinite meteorites. Or and infinite Cogwork Assembler. Come that on, too. Rachel. They don't have haste. Think big. Oh, darn. Do they? No. No, it does. No, they do gain haste. Infinite yes. Cogwork, Cogwork Assemblers. Or infinite Power Stones. Sweet. To declare how powerful you are, and yeah. then infinite cargo assemblers, infinite. and then infinite meteorites. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mirrorworks also makes a token copy of your basalt monolith. If that's the direction you'd like to go with this cat, or Red Sun Twilight will also copy it. I think that's this is a sweet version of this. You blow up a couple of mana rocks, you make yeah. the token copies. They tap for additional mana. Yeah, Red yeah, Sun's yeah. Twilight's cool in the stack. That's sweet. That's super sweet. Okay, cool. Roxanne, Star for all savant. Roxanne. I think you have to be playing like. You gotta be doing the Comet Storm version of this deck. Right? Her name is Starfall Savant. I, I think you have to do all of the stuff Star that's of like, Extinction. Yeah, Fireball. <laughs> Fireball, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a comet. It's a meteor. And there's just a cat that's like, Wee! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how this is not an unfinity card is again beyond me. Because we're in the stars. All right, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the next one people are going to be very excited about. You know him. You love him. He's back and he's a mount. It's the Gitrog Ravenous Ride. Also in Infinity, this is just the worst ride at the fair. Yeah, do not get on. <laughs> if this frog is like, hey, get on. No. It's just going ribbit. You're like, what? No. Ribbit. He's got an arm in his mouth. Don't get on his back. Yeah, good point. Uh, this is a five mana, three a black and a green for a frog horror mount. He's got trample. He's got haste. Whenever Gitrog deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature card that saddled it this turn. New mechanic. If you do draw X cards, then put up to X lands from your hand onto the battlefield tapped where X is the sacrificed creature's power. Saddle. One. So saddling is like crewing a card, except you can only do it as a sorcery, I believe. Mm -hmm. And in this case, saddle one means you tap a creature with one power more, and it just jumps on the Gitrog's back, and then each of the saddle cards have a different payoff for if the card is, has been saddled. Yeah. In this case, when the Gitrog deals combat damage, it just I just eats. Throws you off he and throws devours you. Off you. And devours you, or he throws you to your death, and then you draw a bunch of cards, yeah. and you get to put a bunch of lands on the battlefield. Yeah, again, don't ride. Don't ride this frog. Yeah. Um, this is super explosive. You can hack with him as a trample haste 6-5, draw a ton of cards on some of the ones we're about to talk about, and then drop like five lands. I genuinely think this card is extremely, extremely powerful. Yeah. Like, I, we were all joking when Yargle and Multani came out where we're like, LOL, this is a six man, 18-6 or whatever. <laughs> oh, what, it doesn't even do anything. Yeah. And then you just die immediately. And that's a Powers Matters deck in Golgari. Yeah. This is with a power, no additional effects. With no effects. Yeah. This is a cheaper Power Matters deck in Golgari with, with huge effects yeah. on your commander. And the saddle. And it's the Gitrog, which is pretty sweet. So you're going to put a lot of similar things in it. Efficient creatures, usually with downsides, that have really, really high power. Yeah. So you can throw them with a Gitrog monster. I looked at lists for um, Grevin mm -hmm. as well as Yargle and Multani. Mm -hmm. uh, because they all care about cards with cheap mana cost and high power. So yep. Lupine Prototype, Wayward Swordtooth, Rotting Regisaur are all 
good rates on power versus cost, and they have some kind of downside. Mm -hmm. In this case, Wayward Sword Tooth is like upside because you can play another land, but yeah, it doesn't really matter with Get Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, sh sure, get your extra land. Throw the dinosaur! Yeah, and then they have seven more. Rotting Registrar, and the best part is you can play Get Rock, and then like a card like Rotting Registrar, which is at the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. If you have enough mana, you do it on the same turn, saddle it, toss it, so you never get that upkeep downside. Mm -hmm. Hunted Bone Brute, three mana for a 6-2. Wall of Blood. Put a wall on the frog. This is sweet. Pay one life. It gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. It's a zero two. You can just make this 17, 18 power. Yeah. You just pay pay 18 life, draw 18 cards, put 18 lands onto the battlefield on yeah. turn four, probably, because you ramped, because you're in green. Yeah. Pretty wild. And here's the thing, too. You can saddle get rog with Wall of Blood, mm -hmm. hit someone, mm -hmm. and then wait till the combat damage happens. And then, I think in response to the sacrifice trigger, you can pump the Wall of Blood. Oh yeah, probably. So you don't have to. You don't have to pump the blood immediately. I would think so. The moment it deals combat damage, you get a trigger. Do you want to sacrifice then you a creature? Respond to that. Boop, you respond boop, to boop, that. Boop, pump boop, the boop. blood. If yeah. I'm wrong, that makes sense to me. Too bad. Get off the ride. Uh, Phyrexian Soul Gorger, three mana, eight eight. Yep. You want to put uh, cast Duh. that one on the same turn that you cast the Get Rog, so you don't have to play that cumulative upkeep. But yeah, uh, Demigoth Titan is great. This is a four mana, eleven ten. You cast this a turn before Get Rog, slam Get Rog, throw the Titan, draw eleven cards, put eleven uh, lands into play. Yep. And then you have the original Yargle and the Yargle and Multani. Just an eighteen six. Not measly. And then you have a bunch of cards that also want to die, that want to get tossed off the saddle. Yeah. I think Vindictive Lich is a really pretty nasty curve with this. You pay Vindictive yeah. Lich on four, you play Gitrog on five or earlier if you've ramped. And then when Vindictive Lich dies, you draw four cards, put four lands into play, and one opponent sacrifices a creature, one opponent discards two cards, and another opponent loses five life. Ha -ha. Also, somebody just got hit by your frog. <laughs> uh, it just seems like a wildly explosive start uh, yeah. out of a deck. Evan Death Draco Lich is a 5-2 that you can cast from your graveyard, so if you run out of cards somehow, yeah. um, you can cast it from your graveyard and fling it again. Yep. Uh, and this deck definitely wants a Skull Spore Nexus. Yeah, so six green green, but it costs X less, just like the Great Henge, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And then whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, you make a green fungus dino with base power and toughness equal to the total power of those creatures. Wow. Yeah. And you pay two and tap it, double a creature's power until end of turn. Seems good. Yeah, you also probably, probably play Zopandral Hunger Dominus in yeah, this deck. Yeah, double some powers. So we're doing that. We're flinging. We're drawing cards. We're putting lands into play. Why? What are we doing? So we can win. So we can win lands? with something. Yeah, probably landfall something. Landfall is pretty good in this deck because even if let's say you draw five cards and only put three two lands in, that's still two landfall triggers on some really powerful stuff. Yeah. Finally, I think this is definitely like a field of the dead type situation. This might be the best field of the dead commander ever. Yeah, I think. because you draw it and you put them all into play, yeah. so they're are all going to trigger each other. Like you're going to find field of the dead. You're drawing a huge amount of cards. Yeah, and you're going to have the different types of lands in these colors. You're set. I really like Nissa of Shadowed Bows in this oh, deck. Oh, yeah. This is landfall. You put loyalty counters on it, and then she has a minus ability. It's minus five, where you put a creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Yeah, uh, equal to or less than the number of lands you control. And it gets uh, two one-one counters on, too, randomly. Yeah, so you just you put all these lands on, Nissa gets a million counters, <laughs> and then you reanimate the thing you just sacrificed, and it's bigger now? Yeah, that's sweet. Seems like a very cool loop and is a great place for this Planeswalker. Yep. Okay, so power matters strategies. Again, just look out, look up anything on the Yargle and Multani list, and you'll find a lot of sweet stuff on there that will work very well in this deck. And it will often also just be your win cons, too. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of cool that this deck has kind of been built in a bunch of different ways. Yeah, this is the most powerful way yet. Um, if you can, if you use things that like have flexible, like uh, their power and toughness is equal to mm -hmm. the number of lands you control. Oh wow! Those kind of things are going to scale up, up, up as the game goes along, and you can fling them with Gerard and drain their life. Uh, Green sleeves is that creature that has power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. And then there's a way to just draw like eighty cards in this deck sometimes. Well, not eighty, but a lot of cards in this deck. Yeah, I mean, having other ways to put all these Power Matters cards to use, like uh, Doomweaver is one of my favorites. Yeah. It has Soul Bond, and it says, as long as Doomweaver is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has, when this creature dies, draw cards equal to its power. Wow. You have a sack outlet, you have a lot of high power creatures, Doomweaver is going to be incredible. Yeah, Soul Bond, and then the thing that dies, you play another one, Soul Bond with that, that's going to die. So mm -hmm. you're drawing like twice the number of cards, basically. you got to be careful, you got to run out of cards at some point. <laughs> 
yeah. And then you have like momentous fall, essence harvest. Um, essence harvest is a way to drain life. Momentous fall is a way to draw a bunch of cards and gain life. Mm-hmm. Soul's majesty, return of the wild speaker. Last march of the Ents seems really powerful in this deck. Mm-hmm. Again, you don't really care about the cards that cost eight mana or more because you're going to have all of the cards that can get you there. You're going to play all those lands and then mm-hmm. you're just going to be able to bust it out. And of course, Silvala. If you don't have enough mana somehow, you play Silvala, you add mana equal to the power of uh, one of your big boys and, then you and, saddle and you're cooking. Up. You Recast saddle your frog. Silvala up and toss her into the, that's how confident into you are. Into the great beyond. Yeah, you're like, I don't care about Silvala anymore. I'm so winning this game. I'm going to saddle Silvala and murder her. <laughs> this card is so powerful. Um, yeah, it's it, nuts. And you're going to draw cards off of Savala's first ability because you're going to have the biggest power creature to, yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, this is a sweet one. It's a, a Gitrog's got a, a new groove. A new groove, and it's you on the saddle. Don't ride this ride at <laughs> Infinity. Okay, let's talk about another ridiculous commander, the last one we're going to talk it, about today. This is another busted Golgari commander. Somehow she's uncompleted. I don't know how this happened. Maybe we jumped time. It weared off. That's War how it works. Yeah. Yeah. You just half your body becomes consumed by Phyrexian tech and it just wears and off like a hangover. And now she's just a lady again. With boots, by the way. She, yeah, she does have <laughs> Are there cowboy feet in boots. those boots? Or they just... couldn't cover her, all of her snakes with cowboy boots. <laughs> I love this art, though, because she's sitting among stone statues. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Which it, it leans into her Gorgon heritage. It's Frasca five boots. Vraska the Silencer. One, a black and a green for a legendary Gorgon Assassin. She's a 3-3 with Death Touch. Whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay one. If you do, return that card to the battlefield tapped under your control. It's a treasure token with the uh, treasure token ability, and it loses all other card types. What? So remember when Shelob came out and it was six mana and everyone was like, that rules, I want to do exactly that. Uh, Now she's three mana and makes treasures. (laughs) Yeah, and the cards keep their text. They don't become treasures. Nope. Like with that. They still have all their yeah. abilities. They just, just also sacrifice for mana now. Yeah. And they're not creatures. So, like, I remember Geese of Glorious Resurrector coming out and being like, this is busted. Vraska is, seems extremely strong. She's extremely strong. Um, and it's three mana? It's so cheap. And this is the kind of commander that you really do have to remove because her, she's not. She's not she's Turgrid. She's not, not Turgrid, though, right? She's not Turgrid. But no. she's not not, not Turgrid. Turgrid. She says. Kill all your stuff and take it. That's what she says. <laughs> yeah. Turgon is just like, get rid of your stuff and yeah. you hate it. This Discard is like, your hand and take it. give me this stuff. Give it all to me. Yeah. And then we have to pay one for each creature? Yes. So yeah. you do have to pay for it, but I, you're in Golgari. You'll be fine. Um, so the first part of this plan is just kill all their stuff. Yeah. Um, Black's got all your help there. Yeah. Predictably... You, you want targeted removal because you want to make sure that you're getting the, the best thing. thing on the battle, battlefield. Yeah. But, uh, of course, this is, we're going with edicts as well. So you want your destruction removal spell like Infernal Grasp or Go for the Throat. But you also probably want edicts like Shieldred's Edict, which specifies that you sacrifice a non-token creature. Mm. Uh, so you're not getting got by tokens. Yep. Um, or something like Soul Shatter, which says uh, your opponent sacrifice the creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana value. Oh, so, so often it's going to be their commander. Too. It's going to be it's going to be something real. They do get to hide their commander though. Right? Yeah, so you, you can't, can't steal. steal commanders with this. I do not think. Yeah, because it will go to their command zone, and then you will no longer be able to return it to the battlefield. Right? Yeah. Because uh, it's not in their graveyard anymore. Yeah. Um, so this deck is going to dedicate a, a decent amount of the deck to just removing creatures from the battlefield. Remember, you've got to destroy uh, or they have to die. Mm-hmm. You can't exile them for any reason. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But once you've done that, which, you know, at this point, your opponents are like, Oh, I hate you. Stop it. You're edicting my whole board. This is horrible. And you stole my stuff at the same time? Uh, But this is where stuff gets to get really cool. Yeah, Because you can get some really sweet additional value from Vraska. Yeah, you came downstairs and talked to Jamie, and you started asking about this card the other day, and I was like, what is she talking about? Whatever she's talking about sounds too good for magic. And it turns out what you were talking about was Vraska and her synergy with artifacts. Yeah. So Vraska... When their stuff dies, you return it to the battlefield, the card, back to the battlefield under your control as a treasure. It's a treasure on top of whatever else On top else of it is. being, yeah. it's not a creature anymore. Yeah, it's not a creature anymore. It's a treasure artifact. Yeah. Meridian Revel says, whenever an artifact is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. It's a treasure. 
Yep. You tap and sacrifice it. It's an yep. artifact that goes to their graveyard, an opponent's graveyard. And you draw a card. And you draw a card. Yeah. Not to mention every time they crack a treasure or a clue or yeah. a food. People or... think Radiant Revels, oh, just the things that my opponents are cracking on their board. Like, no, if you steal something that is an artifact from them and you use it and send it to the graveyard, yeah. it still is an artifact going, the gra- going into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield. Yeah. So you get to draw off of the cards you steal now. So busted with this with this commander. I so not only are you stealing the cards with like cool enchantment like effects on them yeah. or ETB effects, mm-hmm. but now you also get to get additional card draw off of it when you so sack it for wild. mana, and you can sack that mana to by the way steal the next thing from them. Yeah, cool. Cool is a word for it. The other thing I found that I was like I cannot believe this works is scrap trawler. Oh my goodness. You can crack your treasure token, which has the mana value of the card that you killed. Oh my gosh. And you can get artifacts from your graveyard back to your hand. Obviously, this is a more artifact focused version of this. Yeah. But the fact that you can just. You the can scrap turn their works with it. Into just Recursion. Yeah, you probably put Wayfarer's Bobble in this deck like just to do that. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow, that's ridiculous. So there's all of these artifact synergies. You can do Marionette Master and and that those kind of things. Yeah, Marionette Master seems really powerful here for sure. Um, so every time you crack one of their treasure things. I- creatures, yeah. um, you drain them for th- th- three, four. Uh, you drain one person for four. Yeah. Something that I think is cute <laughs> is you could turn them back into creatures. How? With- oh. <laughs> It's the one. So there's two ways. There's displaced dinosaurs where you kill their thing, you pay one, it enters your battlefield as a treasure. Displaced dinosaurs sees it as a like, historic a permanent. And it turns it into a oh dinosaur. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, you could upgrade their card from like a 2 2 to a 7 7 dinosaur. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, you could also use Karn Silver Golem. Right. Non creature artifacts become artifact creatures. Yeah. So he pay- has an activated ability that you pay one and target non creature. Is who you turn your treasure back into a creature, so now if it has an attack ability, yeah, that's or funny. something like that, you can you can make it live again. <laughs> yeah, it's so hilarious too because Vraska she doesn't need to be the one killing it. The other no. things, she can just die randomly and you just steal it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Vraska sacker. with like an instructable and a board wipe too, and then like just like a Gisa Glorious Resurrector decks. There's a lot of different ways to really get under your opponent's skin here. So here's my favorite thing you can do with this. Okay. And you've used this card to stunning effect, um, is Thrilling Encore. A Thrilling Encore. So if you steal like two or three things. Oh, this is nuts. You can crack all those treasure tokens. To cast. To cast Thrilling Encore, and it brings them all back to your battlefield because. Because they were in graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because it's not a creature when it goes to the graveyard, but it still is a creature in the graveyard. In the graveyard. Put into, yeah. (laughs) So you're in control of it when at least like yeah, three or yeah, four yeah, things yeah. die. Man, this is great. This is how you explain magic to a new player and make them go, what? No. What? How does it work like that? Yeah. I mean, this is certainly a Rise of the Dark Realms deck. You're playing in your opponent's graveyards big time here. Yeah, totally. This is a great activated sleeper deck. Oh, yeah. It says you may have activated sleeper. Enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature in a graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn, except it's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. And these cards are all one, two, three mana cheaper because you're cracking the treasures to cast yeah, them to cast them yeah oh you can't play activate sleeper in the deck actually it's a phyrexian and Vraska no longer hangs that's out with true. those people that's true she's in a new era <laughs> she's, she's yeah big, she's better now this is her era's tour uh, uh <laughs> this is finally a labellia deck oh yeah because labellia exiles a creature that it was put there from the graveyard from the battlefield this turn and you make that many treasures where it x is the uh ex- the exile card's power that's Sweet. pretty cool finally uh, and there's one final one that I liked that uh, that goes in this category. It's Wreck Hunter. Oh, yeah. When this enters the battlefield, choose target player. You create a tapped power stone token for each non-land card in that player's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. So yeah, if you have cool. two or three of their things, you can crack all of those. This is the Scrap Hunter. deck. Yeah. And yeah. this gives you the power stones, which you can use to pay for Vraska's ability, first oh, of all. Oh, that's right. Uh, because those are abilities and not spells. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can put it in any version of this deck, but you're in control of when things go to the battlefield. You're doing a lot of edicts. This doesn't mean you're bullying one person big time I mean, to maximize this, but you're bullying three people. You're bullying everyone, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's Vraska. You know everyone should get uncompleted if it turns them out like this. <laughs> if they come out so fun. So fun. She's so fun now. <laughs> Yeah, you see Vraska, you kill it. 
Because even Vraska at five mana is still very good. It's still really powerful. Even Vraska at seven mana, we'd probably be like, this card's really good. Because look at Shelob. It's what? Is it six? It's six. I think it's six. But you have to like kill something with, with a, a spider. spider. Yeah. <laughs> like, somehow. This is just like play removal spells. Play have removal fun. spell. Pay an extra one. Yeah. And it's yours now. Have a bunch of edict effects. Have fun. <laughs> okay. All right. So those are the top commanders that we thought were cool and powerful. More on the powerful side for this last one. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about our favorite commander from this set. Jimmy, we're so rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of our commanders involve taking your opponent's stuff. Mine is Ariat the Beguiler, if you couldn't tell. Hey, mine's Vraska. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I want to be clear. I would never build this deck. This is there's no appropriate play group for for me to play this. I would build Ariette right because I have to cast dumb auras. Yeah, you to have do to stuff. cast huge auras to do yeah. that. Vraska is just like barely moving a finger and taking things and, and turning them. Kill to that. Give it to me. Mm, yes. Give that to me. And you have a complaint. Silence. <laughs> stone. Stone. You stone now. Um, what if they were power stones instead of treasures? Uh, yeah, then you don't do the weird sack loops. Then I'm not interested in it. The thing. <laughs> I love, I love the fact that you can use all these weird. Like as soon as I found thrilling encore, I was like, that's incredible. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. So fun. Just the way it's templated. They never. It's like they thought of Frasca after the fact and didn't think about how it played with prior cards because it's just <laughs> ridiculous. There's so many wild things that like I, I checked is just the wild. Viridian Revel thing yeah. with so many people in the yeah. office. Yeah, I checked yeah, with yeah. like three or four people because I was like, this is how this works, right? And uh, as far as we can tell, yes. Yeah, if we're wrong, <laughs> too bad. You it's, gotta tell us in the comments. Yeah, let us know ASAP uh, so I don't build this deck. Uh, you're not building it. No. Okay, good. You're not building it, right? All right, I'll see you on no. the other side. You know what? I'll steal your Vrasco with my Ariat That's the Beguiler. Fine. I would deserve that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe right, we'll have a meanies. We'll have a meanies yeah, extra a meanies, turn. <laughs> meanies deck. You're such a meanie. Everybody and then, uh, bring your meanie. It was the last episode we ever filmed. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about what we thought was the most powerful commander. I mm -hmm. went with Vraska in this case um, mm. because I just can't believe it's three mana. I think that that's to me fair. is unbelievable. <laughs> she doesn't do anything on her own. True. Like, you do need a removal spell. You do need extra mana. Like, if you're going to have Braska do something, you sort of need six mana, right? Like, her, a removal spell, or and, an, edict, and yeah, an extra. And the extra mana. And the extra mana to get at least, like, one thing out. So, it, you do have to sort of line some stuff up, but that stuff is just removal spell. So Yeah, you betcha. Um,. I think Vraska is a decent pick for this. I I picked the Gitrog mm -hmm. uh, totally because I've played against so many Yargo Yargo and Maltani, Maltani decks, decks yeah, which they just... truly do nothing, and you're just dead on turn four. Yeah. Um, and the Gitrog does so much, and, and you're can gonna have the Yargo Maltani deck inside of it, inside of it, and it's cheaper, and it has haste. The Gitrog is so like... hungry; it can eat the entire Yargo and Maltani deck. Yeah, and play it, <laughs> <laughs> and be like, yum, yum, eighteen lands. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think this is going to be the kind of thing where you're like, you cannot let the Gitrog monster hit. Well, it uh, has haste, you, so yeah. you have to anticipate. You it just have out to as well. be ready. Yeah, uh, because if this hits, you're just going to be miles behind. Yeah, if they draw five and put up to five lands into play, you're. Ah. Yeah, oh, we didn't even mention this. You can just play all the animate land spells in that deck. Absolutely. And then Honestly, that, just murder them with those. It is very possible that this deck runs like 50 lands. Yeah, and you just play like Kamal's Will like or... Like a super high density. Sylvan Awakening. If you have like... Because if you draw 10 cards, you want to be able to put like, you know, six totally. lands into play. Yeah. So I, I think it is not unreasonable to run eight and it's like 45 lands. Yeah. I would be not be surprised even a little bit. You probably play Amulet of Vigor in this deck too then because they do enter tapped. Maybe so untap and you need play even more powerful stuff that same turn, or you fling something yeah. huge or do yeah. any of the Yargo Montani things that will require you to have a ton of mana. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the stuff that's just like like a Malachi Rebirth where it's like if this dies, I'll oh, bring gosh. it back and yeah, then yeah, you're yeah, set yeah. up for the next turn. Uh, luckily, there's no extra combat spells in Golgari that I know of yet. Yet, <laughs> <laughs> hooray. Uh, to the listeners, what commanders do you think are the most powerful commanders in this set? Did we miss any that you would have liked us to talk about? Sorry about that. Uh, are you planning on building any of the commanders we talked about today, Veresco? Mm -hmm. Don't. Don't. Someone's We're probably not. like, what happened to Tiny Bones? <laughs> it's a, it, well, Tiny Bones is all right. He's yeah, sweet. Tiny uh, Bones is in the 99, everyone, yeah. let's be clear. <laughs> uh, what are the sweet cards that we missed that could have gone in any of the decks that we talked about today? Yeah. And if you want to pick up any of those cards, head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command because I know that your head is going, oh, finally, I can upgrade my Yargo and Multani deck to a Gitrog Ravenous Ride deck. That's awesome. Or I finally want to build X deck because, wow, that's the thing. And it's my favorite version of Kellen or whatever it is is 
cardgame.com slash command has a huge inventory. They've got cards of all different types and as well as quality. So you can build a budget deck by just buying the cheapest version of each card. That's what I've done in the past. It's a great way to just goldfish your deck really quickly if you're interested in just throwing one together. And then you slowly upgrade the pieces over time. That's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Or build a brand new deck with the most blinged out thing you can imagine and have it all arrive at your doorstep in one package so you can sleeve it up immediately and get to playing. We love Card Kingdom because of the convenience and we are sure that you will too with their buy list and all of their other products on their website, singles, sealed product, and more. Support the show, cardkingdom.com slash command. And once those cards are in your hand, you're going to need to protect them. Go to ultrapro.com slash command to support your cards and the show. They yeah. have the highest quality magic accessories in the business. You can get sleeves and play mats, deck boxes, binders, card sorters. My favorite product oh, that I picked card up sorter. recently. So the good. card sorters are awesome. Yeah. Like, I'm really specific about how I organize my cards. So I like to have the highest quality storage and yeah. ways to sort them because I like them to be in order. So when I'm building, I can find the cards that mm -hmm. I'm looking for. And like knowing that I have the right products to get it done and it, it you know, I'm not just sorting and leaving piles all over my tables for my cat to <laughs> knock over. Uh, I trust Ultra Pro because I know I'm protecting my cards and I'm making sure that they're in a state where I feel like I'm I'm respecting the amount of money that they're worth <laughs> and and also just the the amount of them that yeah. there are. Yeah. Uh, plus they have great deals. If you are new to magic and you're trying to upgrade what like how you're storing your stuff you can go to ultra pro when they have a flash sale you can pick up a whole bunch of stuff at the same time for great prices and know that you're getting high quality accessories i love the satin cubes uh because mm -hmm. i carry a lot of decks when i travel so i like to have them nice and uh cubed up nice and 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 and, and protected small. sealed yeah, com compact is the word I'm looking for. Uh, I said none of those. And also uh, safe. I know that my deck isn't going to you know, pop open in my box and drop cards all over the place. Uh, again, support the show and pick up some sweet stuff over at ultrapro.com slash command. And if you think that you can beat us with your Card Kingdom and Ultra Pro products and on bring extra turns... Go ahead and submit for the auditions. It's open to patrons only. You can sign up at patreon.com slash command zone. Uh, when you sign up to our patron, you'll get all the details as well as we'll have the details in the more info box below. They are due April 12th. The date is coming up. Don't rush this if you're serious about this. Extra Turns is an amazing show. It's a great chance to get on a show that's not game nights, but it is pretty much gameplay. Mm -hmm. Gets a ton of views on YouTube. It's a great way to just get yourself out there and show the world that you can destroy Josh and myself in a commander game. <laughs> Less surprising that you beat me, more surprising that you beat Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so check out the more info box for all the details on that. Again, you would do need to be an active patron to uh, enter, and you can stop the Patreon after that, but you'll find that we have so many amazing benefits that you're going to stick around anyway. Yeah, make sure you follow the instructions in the link below. Yes, because, uh, please that follow is... the instructions. We are checking to make sure people follow the instructions. That is a big part of the audition. You will not make it if you don't follow the instructions. Yes, correct. Uh, big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. Thank you to Damon Lentz, Eric Lem, Megan Yip, Gaurav Galati, Jordan Pridgen, Jamie Block, Arthur Metacroft, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Sam Waldo, Evan Limberger, Katie Cole, Mitch Trafford, and Josh, Josh Leekwai. Leekwai. And of course, Jimmy Wong. And of course, Rachel Weeks. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Howdy do. Have fun in Thunder you, Junction. How do you say goodbye in cowboy talk? See you around. <laughs> <laughs> Later, partner. <laughs> bye you bye. Just shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> you power him like get rog. There you go. You <sighs> humph, humph. Oh, that's Paul Cheon. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>